Hello, everyone. I'd like to. Can you hear me okay? I didn't hear no. They didn't mean that you can or can't. Um, I guess we'll find out. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 632. Will you please rise and pledge allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Monty, do the roll call, please. Andrew Benson here. Katrina Bakowitz here. Doug Day. Joseph Wetmore here. Edward Levine here. Item four in our resolution. I know it's a little bit different than what we had at the start of the week. Uh, originally, item number seven was number four, which was the uh, proposed Salad Bar District. Um, also, I use a public hearing, but my understanding is as long as we do it after, not before the, the time is set, we'll be fine. So, we'll be a few minutes later. So, that brings me to item number four, which is the resolution authorizing the map plan report for sewer district number two. Um, to bring the board up to speed, that is the DOT, and I think one or two more users that will be in that proposed district. And as the board knows, this has been an ongoing discussion between the DOT and the three different municipalities, the villages of Fuga Heights and Lansing and Town of Lansing, to make sure everyone's on the same page and comfortable. Uh, and we have uh, Eric from DOT, and we have Brian from CHA, right? Correct. Correct. Uh, we're not going to make this into a public hearing for them, but uh, we'd like to add some information here that many people aren't aware of before we move forward with this, and maybe it'll make our board a little more comfortable. Now granted, this is just allocating that we move forward with a map plan report. It's not that we would finalize the district, then we've been through enough map plan reports and the process there afterwards, whether it's been a sewer district or a water district, that we all know this is only another step in a long procedure. So, what I've learned today, and Brian, please chime in if I uh, misinterpret what I heard, is that, uh, from the original design, first thing we did is look at the site plan. The site plan is on the same amount of acreage. Uh, we also talked to the county. They're removing the rest of their land off of the proposed district. So we're simply talking about the footprint of the DOT, which is about 15.4 acres, something like that. Okay. This also helps our partners, which are the two villages, because they're concerned as we are about EDU allocation and will talk about that a little bit later as far as the MOU for the uh, three uh, municipality sewer unit. So having said that, one of the things I've learned is that from the original design, which was version one, version four, you've turned the building in a different direction so that hopefully there'll be less sound coming in the other direction. Is that correct? I mean, feel free to, to, to if you want to come up here to talk, feel free. <coughs> Brian Bouchard with CHA Consulting. Uh, that is correct as far as the disposition of the building. There were numerous iterations from the beginning, uh, from the sketch plan phase, the orientation of the building, and how the site developed once um, you know, we got into some of the environmental review with respect to buffering, uh, wetland uh, delineation, and working around the wetlands and minimizing disturbances and things. So um, there has been coordination as far as the disposition of the building and the placement of it on the site. So this is not a site plan review. This is uh, not an approval for that. We're simply um, approving to move forward with the map plan report. It's my understanding that we're looking between about 8 and 10 EDU allocation for that project. Um, so that's not a lot. It's going to come out of our allocation for the town of Lansing. I also have a letter from Brett Cross, which he's very comfortable with this proposal. And so you've also seen the mayor of Lansing, Don Hertel's comments in Lansing Star, that he's comfortable. He also gave me his word, and I, I trust him. So that, you know, if we need a letter of documentation, I'm comfortable moving forward that our partners are there. So I would like to um, share the recommendation of the Water Sewer Advisory Board, which is to move this forward to the next step. But I've also open up to the board if they have any questions. Once again, this is a little bit, I would say, premature, but normally we have our water and sewer advisory boards on first Wednesday. This was the exception. So 
I'm also going to back off a little bit here, and if the board members have any questions, uh, whether it's Guy or myself or whoever, as far as the engineering goes, feel free to do that. There's also, uh, I believe the Kenny Smiths will be involved in this, that they have shown an interest to be in that sewer district. Um, Mr. Mr. Finkelday who owns the storage units. Um, I don't know if he's back from Costa Rica this year. So this basically is an allocation to come up with two different scenarios. One with Mr. Finkelday's property in it, even though if it's only the, the, the storage units, he may not want to, want to pay for that. And one with, with so one will be with it in it, one without on that. And the interesting thing is that this is a unique situation because the Kennedy Smith's property Hillcrest Road cuts their property in half. So half is on one side and half is on the other side. So it's a little bit unique in the way that we normally get, don't get to see this. Um, so does the board have any questions, concerns, or comments before we move forward? Um, why move this tonight? Is there a time rush on this at all? Because it feels like it, it just got put on us without being out on the agenda where the public can know this was. Well, and it was. You're absolutely right. It was. There's no time crunch as far as I'm concerned because there's still a long process to go through. But on the other hand, I felt comfortable putting it on the agenda tonight because it's been discussed, you know, for a while. So it isn't like this is the first time you were aware that the DOT wants to get in the uh, district. And it has been coverage in the Lansing Star, among others, that this has been discussed and moving forward. So. I felt comfortable to at least approach the board with this and see if they want to move forward or not. I don't think this is, my personal opinion, a last minute because there really isn't any finalizing this. This is this another step forward. You still have, after this, you still have the map plan report coming back. You still have the, the public interest order coming up. You still have the referendum period of 30 days. So there's a lot of safeguards here moving forward. It isn't like this is one and done and we can't do anything more. So that's why I felt a little more comfortable tonight addressing this with the board, as opposed to saying, "Oh, we haven't seen this before. What's going on?" Oh, it's not that I don't feel like I understand what's happening. I don't think the public has had a chance to weigh in on this or know that it was on our agenda. I know this is a uh, topic that there's a lot of concern about, uh, and to not give the public a chance to come and comment to us, say we would, you know, whatever their comments are on a topic that we know is fairly uh, controversial. I think is uh, unfair to the public to give them a chance. Well, let me let me take a step back here and say what the process is. There will still be and guy help me with this if you may. There's still going to be a public interest order, isn't there? Out there, there's still going to be a public hearing about this. <clears throat> yeah. Well, after the map plan report is finalized, there'd be a public interest order and a mandatory public hearing. Uh -huh. The board would still have to determine if it was willing to go forward after that public hearing. So, I think just to elaborate a little bit on that, um, really the map plan report maybe is needed to actually, you know, we've we've submitted our, our um, you know engineering memo as far as the sewer usage usage on the site goes, so that um, the town's engineer can prepare the map plan report. But maybe the map plan report is the document that would elaborate on the information as far as the district boundary, uh, the EDU allocation, the sewer usage of the site. And that document is needed to be prepared in order to um, distribute it to the board for your consideration in the public as well. One of the nice things about the map plan report is, and I don't want to use the word force, but it brings forward what the site plan is. Most would be before that, you have to bring us the site plan. Here is what, what, what the map plan report is. Here is the definitive area that's going to be addressed. Here is the way that the bays will look. All these things, the information will come out in a site, you know, in map plan report. So it's like a chicken and the egg. Which comes first? Does the the final site come first, or does the map plan report uh, authorization come first? So, Can I go ahead. Move, if we move this forward, there's an expense, though. The expense will be paid for by the DOT. Our engineer expense. Yes. Correct. Um, but I understand what Joe is saying. I don't think there's any reason not to wait till the next meeting to do it to make sure that everybody feels like they're appraised and part of the process. I don't have uh, I don't have any feelings in the way. And if more than one says no, is 
Bill Hathaway's the next meeting. But on the other hand, um, we try to move things forward expeditiously. This is not like this has not been out in the public. There still will be time for public comment before we move forward on this. There are safety guards to come through in our public discussion to say this, this, and this. We still have an opportunity for the board to, to have um, a say in it. So I think there's still leverage there. I feel very uncomfortable if there wasn't any safety nets for the board to move forward. Uh, but on the other hand, we also like to work with our partners here, especially since the, the two other municipalities have said yes. If they didn't say yes, we wouldn't be having these conversations. I like the idea of seeing scenes on it. For me, that's what I remember, that it just mm -hmm. here. So I like the idea that there's a planning map, which then I can see what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. okay. Otherwise, I mean, I have gone up there and I have looked around, literally. But still, I can't get the idea because I didn't know these people had you know, property on the other side. I wasn't quite sure which house was which. So I, I would like to see this go forward. Okay, so. Is there, is there a way to get clarity? Over? Oh, cricket? Oh. I, I would just like to, to interject. I mean, like I said, this is, this is a formal document that needs to be prepared for, you know, public hearing and everything to move forward. So I think if we're looking for solid information, it would probably be in the best interest to let them move forward with the map plan report, and then you really have something solid you're looking at. Because prior to that, it's you know we've we've had I think what six meetings maybe Brian with the with the Wasabi committee and stuff, and they talked about this, and you know they've been real great about readjusting and you know dealing with the concerns and you know getting with Hugo Heights and stuff. So I just feel like they want to prepare a formal document so you have something solid you're truly looking at forward on at that point. I mean, I guess I would agree with that in that aspect. You know, they come back to the map plan report, I mean, it, it's your choice to not move forward at that point with it, I guess, but there's no expense to us, and I think it just puts solid numbers and, and, and stuff on paper so everybody really understands what what it deals with. Well, I agree with you, and I agree with Ed that I know we have several points in which we can uh, say yes or no on this process, and that there's more plan chance for the public to input. But I also know how these things uh, feel to the public. And when something comes up that wasn't on the agenda, so no one had a chance to know that we were going to discuss this, the public feels like we're sneaking something in. And I want to—I don't want to burden this project with that at the beginning, the first thing that we do. The public feels like we snuck it in on agenda. They didn't have a chance to even comment on it. They didn't have a chance to voice in. And once you get that poison into the system, and we know this project's already had a lot of people uh, very upset about it, I don't want to poison this with that kind of uh, start. And so I'd much rather deal with this at our next meeting. I don't have a real objection to it, but I really feel that the public has to have a chance to see that we're starting this process, especially at the beginning. So they know this is coming up, they know it's moving forward, and they don't feel like we're sneaking it in uh, without giving them a chance. Okay, how the rest of the board feel about this? Did you say when we would hear from our people day on this? Now reach out to them. Um, there are two options, the in and the not yet. That's what the proposal is. So there'll be two different options. So and and, and Quite honest with you, I would if I don't hear from them, I would keep him out. Mm -hmm. He hasn't written anything for it, and he's been aware of it also. Mm -hmm. And if he wants to come in, there's still time to maybe do something along these lines. Um, he comes back before then. I mean, to me, I understand. I understand the the concern here, but once again, this isn't like a law we're ramming through and nobody's aware of it. And there's still time to um, make adjustments or voice people's concerns and have a public forum. On. In many ways, maybe this actually increases the interest now because there's something here. And that maybe people do come forward and we have a wonderful dialogue at our next public meeting. Um, I, don't, I didn't do that intentionally to force the issue. But on the other hand, it was an opportunity today to move this along because there is a process that you go through, as you know. And it's a lengthy process. Not to mention the, the 239, not to mention the secret, not to mention the NEPA, which we're wanting when the FAA, if they do this. So there's a whole process of doing this so that we look at segmentation. But where do you get, 
who pushes the first ball forward to get it going? And once again, I, I see this as something that at the public hearing you can put your presentation forward and what you've done, where everything is. We can hear the public comment afterwards and see where we can adjust things. I mean, you still have, I hate to use the word leverage, but you still have a say in this. You're simply allocating money. And with most map, map plan reports, we always make sure that we have enough consensus. You have two, you have what? One, two people on this? They have consensus. The DOT is well aware of the fact that if the people aren't happy with it, they can vote it down. I, can, I mean, you're talking about one person that could vote it down. I think you can't ask for more leverage than that. <laughs> You know, and they are well aware of this. So having said, I think this is a unique situation where you can still move, move to the next step. And then from there, have the residents that are affected around them, okay? Next meeting, here it is, public hearing. I feel more comfortable had it been on the agenda so that the public had a chance to know that we're starting the process. That's my feeling. If, it, if they were on the agenda, the public had a chance to know that I would feel fine moving forward like this. Without the public having a chance to come in and comment, I think it's going to really poison the process by making it feel like we're sneaking something in. So let me do a hypothetical for you. Okay, let's say we give it a month. There is no public comment in a month. There might be public comment privately, but there won't be any. This is this won't be a public. So so that to me is is something that we address at the next time. And now we have a month. People will now know there's a month. And they've already had their environmental assessment done. They've had people comment on that. They've had that. And moving forward, once again, what a great time to show these maps. Can we perhaps publish these maps so that people can see them? Can we put that on the Lansing Star? Are, we, are you comfortable doing that, what the final site looks like? Um, I could definitely ask about that. I mean, we have, obviously, the, the entirety of the, the site plan laid out and the utility plan. Um, and I guess I would. Um, also reiterate the fact that you kind of have said, which is, you know, sitting here today, we we have our information, mm -hmm. but we understand that it's the town's process and it's the town engineer's development of his map planning report in which the town board will choose to make their decision. So um, having that document prepared for the next meeting and having it on the agenda that a map plan and report has been prepared for the meeting mm -hmm. in order to start the process not even in the middle of the process. Um, uh, and perhaps the town engineer could be here as well to discuss what his finding is so that the um, board can feel comfortable with the next step, which would be scheduling the public hearing with that document. I would also like to um, ask you if possible to come out once you're comfortable with, with your site plan. Um, you can get send a picture to the town and put that on the website also so people can look at this in advance. Uh, so that we can have some discussion before we, my understanding is we're going, let's say, it's all hypothetical, so let's not jump to conclusions. The map plan report this process, we still have another month to set the public hearing, and then from there, it's another month after that, so now you have two months. So if anything, I think what we've done is we brought this to a head, and this is the Fisher Cup Bay time, and say here, so if anything, we would now be more transparent because they'll have at least a good month, if not longer, because once again, hypothetically, the, the actual public hearing will be two months from now. 60 days, I think, is a well enough time for people to, to, to digest this, ask questions to us, ask questions we can reach out to, to you because we have a great dialogue with you and also with the DOT, to say, okay, here are our concerns. If anything, I see it accelerates that process because now we have clarity. What are you concerned about? What are you concerned about this against? Even though they, they mentioned it in the environmental as, you know, assessment study, let's, let's, let's get this dialogue to the next level. So personally, I think this is a good thing because we're not finalizing anything. So with that being said, any other comments before we seriously consider this? Okay. Anybody want to make a motion to move this forward? I'll move it. Okay, I'll stack it up. Any further discussion? Mrs. Munson? Andrew Benson? Yes. Katrina Finkowitz? Yes. Joseph Wetmore? No. Edward Levine? Yes.
Can I ask a question about this? Quick one? Sure. Okay, I know that you knew that I'd be delighted that you would name a sewer district number two. But, <laughs> um, why isn't it just an extension of Warren Road? Does that have to do with how it's paid for? We had this discussion. Yeah, you want to? It has to do with the fact that there's a dictionary definition of the word extension and then there's a comptroller's definition of the word extension. So each extension is technically a standalone district, even if it stands on the exact same ground as the underlying district in terms of its finances, expenses, and costs. So it's still a separate administrative unit, even though it's an extension. That's all. Will it remain that forever? It's not like the water extensions that become part of the consolidated water? Um, eventually, they probably would all consolidate, but as long but the numbers would have to match up. One district can't disproportionately pay for another. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Eric, have a safe drive. Item number five is the Lansing Community Library Report by Christine Eisenhut. I wanted people just to know from the floor that, which is something brand new that's happening students in grade 5 through 8, which is our middle school, are invited to join a monthly meeting to discuss future level programs and ideas. And we've tried very hard to get teams and three teams involved, and I hope this is a goal. So I think it's a good thing. Good. Um, as we've done in the past, we've helped finance some of the library programs. So Patrick and, and you have a great dialogue back and forth, so hopefully we can come up with some more ideas. Uh, as far as those programs going forward, okay? That'd be great. Okay, so that is agenda number five. Uh, number six is, is Lansing Youth Services from Janice Johnson. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment on that. Under the annual statistics, where it says 100 duplicated youth were served, that's about 25% of the school. I think that's fabulous. Twenty like I so about about one in four of the kids are served, which I think is just wonderful. And then thirty one youth were employed. Those are high school kids. So, so that's really the detail. So I, I I just think it's fantastic. Thank you. So that's item number five was agenda item number six. So my apologies if this is a little confusing. No, I changed the agenda. Did you? She did. Maybe I got the wrong.
Is there anything else we need to talk about for two minutes? It's only one minute. And then we can talk about your one over. Well, I think you need Keep to invite. I think you need to invite the public to come. Yeah. Well, that's an excellent idea. I'm stretching, <laughs> I'm stretching everything out here. We're down to is there, so. We invite the the public comment for this since it's a public hearing. Water is great. Well, soon. Speaking of water, we'll have. Uh, if no one has a comment, we'll wait for a while longer. Um, we're moving forward as fast as we can with the next water lines, aren't we? Yeah. Still have a little bit of cleanup to do in number four. And now the Mother Nature is hoping we'll cooperate here. <laughs> Speaking of Salt Point, um, has anyone saw Salt Point Mountain last week? Yes. <laughs> I have photos. Yeah. Wasn't that amazing? Absolutely amazing. We're talking about when uh, the Highway Department dredged out of Salmon Creek. And it's humongous. I don't know how big this thing was. Because this room and far longer, maybe that high. It was a, it was a tremendous. And you'll see when you look at the bill. You already saw, you already signed for the bill. Forty thousand two hundred sixty-seven dollars. It made the dump trucks look small. <laughs> <laughs> the pile was almost as big as this building. Yeah. I was over there at the highway eyeball. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is that as 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 the days go on, it shrinks for some reason. It's, just, it's exposed to the air, or maybe it's because you've got everybody with a B license driving back and forth. <laughs> so anyways, good job. Good job. I know that Pallon Moore is very happy about this, that Jennifer's very happy about this, because they can finally get their kayaks out of Salmon Creek. Um, but before, they had a hard time doing that. And, um, so, so can I ask a question of cricket on this? Where's all that going to go? That's the what's already on the highway park. Okay. Yeah, you have plans for it or just sit yep. down? Yeah, it's very useful material. So. Okay. So I'll save you some money on the other side. <laughs> I understand. Joe, he dumps it upstream so it can come back. <laughs> it's a circle of life. Starting to play the regular song, my friend. I mean, uh, I am King number out. three. He's <laughs> taking like auditions, right? <laughs>
there's a pro forma version, and if you disagree with the conclusions based on what part one has to say, let me know. But the first question is, will the regulation... Wait, 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 hold on. Can we go back here? I see one of them mentioned that uh, Lake Sturgeon is nearby. We haven't mentioned that, or we can ignore that. One of the maps comes close enough to the lake that it had to... Right. It's within, it's within that circle, but I'm reasonably certain it's not breeding ground. On the land. I know, I just wondered if we have to mention that in this uh, document to say we noticed it said Lake Sturgeon and we're saying we don't think it's going to affect it. Well, you can if you want, but the mapping, the underlying uh, ERM, like environmental resource mapping, showed that this parcel was close enough to trigger a need to review it, but the actual mapping says this wasn't the site affected. Okay. They I put a half mile circle around certain sites. Yeah, so I understand. It makes you look. Is there anywhere right here that we say we want? Uh, no, part, the part three finding statement simply says that negative impacts are expected or projected. It identifies mostly positive impacts by removing properties from ground, ground wells and connecting them to municipal water, thereby protecting aquifers and surface waters mainly administrative apps action because there's no actual disturbance. The water lines are pretty much already installed. Um, and like I said, the DRM mapping, yeah, which I have a pile of if you want to see it. But you can you can add it to the finding statement that if you want, fine with me. It just seems like we ought to say something somewhere in this document that we noticed that. I'm not really worried about where, but I just want to say somewhere. We noticed it, and we don't think it's going to affect the surgeon in any way because it's not changing anything in the physical world. There's not a spot in there. Why don't we say it in the minutes that it was discussed and that was determined? That works for me. I just want to. I don't so want we to acknowledge it. Yeah, I don't want to acknowledge it somewhere. I think by raising it, you just did. Okay. That was good. So will the proposed action create a material conflict with adopted land use? Land use plan or zoning regulations. Again, when I say no, I mean no or a small impact. So, no. Will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of land? No. Will it impair the character or quality of an existing community? No. Will it affect or have a negative impact on a CEA? I'm starting to paraphrase, but no, there isn't one anywhere in the town. Um, <clears throat> Will it affect traffic or infrastructure for mass transit biking or walkways? No. Uh, will it cause an increase in the use of energy or fail to take advantage of energy efficiencies? No. Will it impact public or private water supplies or wastewater treatment utilities? Water supplies, obviously, there will be an impact, but these are individual homes, so it's minor. Um, will it affect the character quality of important historic archaeological, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. Um, duly noting that Sturgeon showed up on a map. Um, will, it pro will it cause an adverse change to natural resources such as wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, and fauna? And again, <laughs> it was my opinion, and it's up to the board whether they share that opinion, but I thought getting people away from ground wells and aquifer depletion was probably a, a net positive to the environmental impacts. Um, will the proposed action increase in uh, potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage? And again, no. And will it create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? Again, no. I think um, avoiding some of the problems of groundwater and lake water are probably pluses when it comes to a human health. But again, that's for you guys to agree or disagree with. So the recommendation based upon the analysis and the weapons and ERM mapping is that, that this would not produce a positive declaration and that therefore a negative declaration should be issued. Okay. That would mean to make a resolution to determine environmental significance. <coughs> Consolidated for our digital user extension number one. Improving public interest to order information and establishment of such as solid market extensions, so much of this is a The referendum period is three days, which means if that's in our safety valve, in case people object, they have an action that they can challenge. So, who is the thing you're talking about in this referendum? Anybody who is being added to the district, within this district, just they have the, to be... Just the added people, not the people already in the district? Correct. Okay. 
Right. Well, it's technically not the added people. It's um, owners of record of taxable real property listed on the last officially completed assessment roll. Total Alliance defined that way, but that's the way the state defines it. So, for instance, a nonprofit entity like the county wouldn't have a vote because they're not taxing the property. Right. Okay, so I can make a motion.
read a couple of them because I feel like now that the issue has become about uh, the stormwater runoff, that this is again very pertinent. And, and I think if it's not considered, um, it's like a slow train wreck that we're watching here. It says um, in the best management practices, runoff control may be a greatest concern when a range is located in an area of heavy annual rainfall because of an increased risk of lead migration. A hard engineered runoff control may be needed in this situation. Heavy rainfall event is defined as rainfall that occurs at such a rate that it cannot be absorbed into the ground and causes an increase in the volume and velocity of surface runoff. So the creek, you know, the bridge that's now, the new bridge that's there, that bridge was wiped out in 1935. And then on the record, there's numerous instances where we know that that's the floodwaters. And we know now that we have a flood, that that, that proposed uh, trap field is, is in a flood plain. So it says that the heavy rainfall event, blah, 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 the impacts of rainfall are greater in rural and slope terrain, which is what we have there, which increases the velocity of runoff, and where the surface water bodies are located on or immediately adjacent to the rain. Bingo. So it's like there's so many things here that are so obviously need to be addressed. You know, and I, and I appreciate you talking about reading this long list of things that we're supposed to do. But I noticed that some of the folks up here are like looking at their fingers or moving papers around. And I feel like that's not very respectful either. I feel like many people, I'm a member of the you know, Citizens for Healthy Santa Creek. I don't think anyone else from that group came here tonight because they kind of feel like um, we're not really being respected. You know, in the science that we've introduced, um, yeah, uh, I'd like to submit a couple of things. Yes. Okay, Mr. Burby, thank you. Is anyone else? I have no one else on the list. Does anybody else want to have to do this If not, I'd like to move on uh, to the next part of our agenda. And that is, I think we have Mike Sigler here from the Tompkins County Legislature.
The town, um, I'm happy to say, I got this out uh, this week, was awarded a $5,000 grant for Myers Park. This all stems from, um, I don't know if you remember, Stewart Park got awarded this $10,000 for a study, so I said, well, that doesn't seem fair. The Stewart Park should get money, and none of the town parks get money. So I put together a program, $50,000 in the last budget, where every town and village can apply and get up to $5,000. The town did. They got $5,000 for trees in Myers Park. Talked to Don Hartel today to say, hey, we got money. Are you guys doing this? He said, Mike, we already did. We got $5,000 too. So that's pretty great. That, um, you know, very proactive on your part to go and get that money. And it was just sitting there. But it's a limited pool too. There's only 50 grand. So, you know, really very kind of gets the worm on that. So I'm very thankful for you guys to that you moved ahead with that. Did you just say it's for trees? That's what I was told. For trees? Yes, landscaping, Myers Park. Katrina and Patrick put together a site plan and plant some trees. 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 Um, what else? The town, the airport construction. That is moving along. Um, big contract just went out. So that's Streamer Associates of Elmira got the contract. Um, this is the um, second phase of the, the Town Coons Regional Airport Terminal Expansion Project. Um, we approved this unanimously. It was awarded the contract for $18.2 million. Phase two it involves elements that include the renovation and expansion of the passenger screening checkpoint. It used to be kind of a pain. Um, you have to go there. There just wasn't a lot of room for screening there. It was just, it was very, um, it just didn't work. So we're, we're going to have a better area there. Um, the departure lounge is going to be a lot nicer. Terminals, gate area. We're basically blowing out the walls. It's, it's going to be a lot bigger in there, so it'll be a lot easier to get around, not quite so cramped. Um, now, this is this award's being contingent on the anticipated award of $10 million in federal aviation um, money. Um, we will hear about that shortly. That's going to supplement the $14.4 million award to the airport last year in the governor's uh, you know, plan. So, between the two, we should have this all being paid for. Um, also, the legislature, by a vote of 10 to 3, uh, I didn't vote for this, and McKenna and Glenn Moore didn't vote for this either. Uh, Dawson, she was away on vacation. They urged New York State to pass the Driver's License Access and Privacy Act to allow the issuance of driver's licenses to New York State residents who are in the country illegally. Um, the resolution in part states that the act will improve public safety by ensuring drivers are properly licensed and educated on traffic laws. Um, yeah, I didn't vote for this. I, uh, I was actually, I spoke kind of a long time about it. If you want to watch, you, you can see that. Uh, basically, I, I don't understand why we're kind of nibbling at the edges here. I mean, I talked to a lot of farmers. They need the workers. The country should get together and say what they want to do with immigration. Instead of, I, I believe we're kind of just facilitating people to live in the shadows. And I, I don't understand that. I, I literally don't understand why. I mean, to work in this country, you need papers. You need a social security number. And then I talked to a farmer, and he goes, well, yeah, these folks, they come to us with papers. So basically what you're saying is they're coming to you with fake papers. So you're, you're accepting identity theft. And then you're saying, OK, now we're going to take that identity theft. We're going to compound the problem by giving people driver's licenses based on that identity theft. I, I don't know why we're driven through all these hoops. The federal government should get together and say, listen, why don't we give people work permits and things like that? But we're trying to do this at a local level, and I just don't think that's the place for it. So um, that's what I argued. I lost. Um, this is not a local law. This is the state is going to decide whether to do this or not. Um, I know a lot of the clerks are concerned, not our clerk, but clerks in other counties are worried because now they're going to have to justify, oh, this is a birth certificate from this country, and this is legal. You know, this is a legal birth certificate. And they, I mean, they're not document experts. They have no idea what a document from you know Honduras looks like. So. I don't know. I, I just think we're we're creating a bigger problem with this than than we should be, to be honest with you. And um, we'll see where it goes. It'll be an interesting, uh, I guess, discussion. Um, but I should state too that if you come to this country and you know you're from a different country and you have a driver's license, you are legal to drive in the state of New York. Um, just like if you go to another country, you take your New York State driver's license, you can drive much anywhere. Um, same thing with states. You know, it's a state issued driver's license. If I go to Mississippi, I can drive. I go to California, I can drive. You know, 
So my, go to Canada. My, many of the people learn how to drive here. Well, and see, so that's there's the rub, right? But again, yeah, we're it'd be nice we're if kind of drive legally. Right. I just feel like we're setting people up, basically. So. Well, the whole system is just off. off. And I get it. Right. Right. I get the farmers, and you say we need to work this, and I don't deny that. But it would seem to me that you would want people to be here. So I want the tax money to be frank. I don't know how to, how to um, push that along. So I don't know. Federal well, government figures this out. Yes. We don't need people working on um, golf courses. We need them working on farms. Okay. They'll give them a visa to work on a golf course. I like food. So. so. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> a lot of agreements. <laughs> So that was the approach I maintained. I just think it's still, I think it's, um, I don't know. We, we could go on for it. Anyway, so that's what the discussion was. Um, what else? We also, oh, we also urged the governor to double down on the state's current water infrastructure funding. So this is interesting. If you're a poor community, you can usually get some water funding. The problem is, um, where some of these things are cited, are wealthy communities, but the projects are incredibly expensive. So it's like, well, yes, we're a wealthy community, but so it's kind of like our uh, our sewage treatment plant, right? Not ours, not Lansing's. It's Q Heights, but they look at Q Heights and go, "Why you love a lot of money? Why do you need help with your?" Well, because it's really expensive and it's used by multiple people. So that's kind of the sales pitch we're going to be making, I think, for this money, um, when or they're going to be making, and that's a pretty valid argument, and that's what I hope the state will recognize. You know, a lot of these projects aren't just geographically there, they're, they're helping a wider area. So that's what we're going to urge the, the governor to do. Um, I'm meeting with Tom O'Meara uh, the week of April 15th. I'm going to meet with Peter Salton over in Cuba Heights. And we're going to talk to him about, hey, you know, this, this is pretty important, this sewage plant. If we were to expand the sewage plant over there, lands could have even more you know, sewage treatment. So that's kind of my goal there. and that, that facili was facilitated by this board. I mean, you guys really, the, the fact that you were able to get that sewage extension still, I think is amazing to see, because that really did, um, I think it's gonna do wonders for the person. Anyway, um, renewing the first issue in Vance earlier this year, the state, the legislature also urged the state um, legislature to amend the state law that would allow us to take county funds and use them for affordable housing. Um, we would just like some home rule, and we were kind of pushing this. Martha Roberts is really pushing this. It's not a bad idea. Um, I've told Martha, though, I just want to know what the money's going to go to. I don't think the county should be building affordable housing. We're, we're just not good at it. We're not good at building housing. Um, but if she tells me, listen, we want to um, site, um, you know, make, make a site ready by putting in sewer lines, by putting in sidewalks and by putting in a road like you guys are doing, right? Um, then I could be, I could get behind that. She does three million dollars, so it's kind of in flux. But frankly, we need the state approval to actually be able to do any of that. So that's what we're seeing right now. And uh, it's such a go. Um, Helen called me about the other day. She said, "What's your position?" I said, "This is the position." I would like more detail if we ever need to do a program, but you know, at first blush, it's not such a bad one. Um, last but not least, we. Um, awarded all the arts and culture organization development grants. Ten organizations got these. Um, Cuba Chamber Orchestra, the Hagrid Theater History Center, and the um, Paleontological Research Institution had all that grants. And they all got increased rewards, which is nice. This all comes out of tourism money, uh, which comes out of your hotel room tax, so it's not property tax. Nice. Um, $10,000 to Friends of Stewart's Park, and $30,000 to the History Center. I actually abstained from all these votes because I work for Park Delta Advertising. They may want to advertise uh, whatever those things are, so I stay out of those things. I think they should use both things. That's up to them. That is it. Do you have any questions? I am ready. Um, Does anybody else have any questions? Go ahead, you're wrong, man. I want to give you this. I want to give you this. Yeah. I'm going to have a teacher for a moment here. Um, I'm going to use this as a segue into our board. You all have these drafts. Um, this is the uh, this is the first draft. There's another one out there, but the 
This is the highlights of the uh, memorandum of understanding. Um, and on here, you go to the page, the third page here, um, paragraph 7. You'll see down at the bottom E. Unit meters are installed, and we're looking to calculate to 200 gallons per day EDU. We're not going to head down from 328 for more allocation of units, they'll be using the same volume. So, to your point, and this is important uh, from, the, from the county also, is that we're working with the other two partners, we said before the villages, that uh, if we can find more uh, accurate uh, capacity, that an expansion or whatever won't be necessary. Um, right now, some have even thought this would go down to 100 units. Uh, we're going to use Cherry Road, which is a closed system, as the control for our meters, so we can get some data from there. We also, when the sewage district number one comes through, which is huge, because we're now moving everybody into the meter discussion, as opposed to you have three units and it's 328 gallons per day, and that's what you are. And, and Cricket kind of tested that, as you, we had 20 units left of that whole area, and we have all these buildings going up. And that's why it was so critical for the DOT to, to, to work with us and say, we're going to take, we're only going to have to use 10 to 12 EDUs on this whole project. And this is why it's so important that the DOT or the county backed, backed off and said, we don't need these now. We'll come back later when things have worked out. So all this stuff is gelling at the same time. My point is you've got five different things going on, and they're all congealing into one area from different aspects. So you'll be you'll hear more of this, and the board will hear more of this as the drafts come forward. But it's just a way to sensitize you um, on this. You know, probably we'll have our discussion probably at our next board meeting. Okay, so we're looking for that as soon as um, we'll have that, that draft sent to you the other graphs, but by then, we also have to have the input of our other two partners to see how they feel about it. So it's going to go back and forth. And we've been through this before. We approved MOUs before, so it's nothing new, but I'm giving you a heads up here so that when it comes to it again, you say, oh, I remember we talked about that before. So that's an FYI. Oh, the other thing I would say on a different note with the airport being on the um, airport uh, service board, they just lost a $20,000 HVAC unit uh, because of the if you look on my Facebook post, you'll see all the explanations from NYSEG and everything else. How this one actually was because of the power line that went, the top line fell on the bottom line and it shorted out and the pole warm and um, not throwing stones, but third world country phrase is being sent around. And I would really urge, especially if we're going to put more electricity on the grid for heat pumps and that type of thing to, to, to get away from carbon. And, and Martha knows all about this, and so does our advisor. But to reiterate that, that we need, as I said this two years ago, it's a smart meeting for nice to have reliable power. I don't have a dog in the fight as far as where it comes from. I want it inexpensive and I want it reliable. And then let the, let the geniuses figure this out, the ones, the engineers, and everyone else. To me, it's about, because we had people that were eight hours, 10 hours without power. Uh, our code officer lost his uh, computer, he lost his cable, he lost his furnace. Uh, that, that didn't come on for 10 hours. And he gets tired of sleeping with a wool hat and coat on inside his house. We've had elderly people that have lost their whole uh, computers fried. Eight-year-old man right down the road. He has nothing now. Where's he supposed to go? So having all that, I ask you, because I think down that the ground is fertile, between our emails, between the FAA, the state senator, and the town of Lansing, it seems like this is the only place. And, and like it or not, uh, the conversation has come up that within 5% of what the voltage is, you won't have these spikes. And part of the reason is because the power plant is not online. When that power comes through there, it stays there. And this is not my information. Some people are sharing information to me about that. So having said that, the engineers are telling me these, these things. So having said that, all these things as we transfer over, noble ideas. God, I'm not opposed to that. But you have to have a safe, reliable transition from one to the other so people don't get hurt. I hate somebody else's house gets burnt down or somebody gets killed because when the surge happened, here we are. I'm saying this publicly because now it's on record. So the people who are responsible for that are going to have to eventually be accountable. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you my sword and now you can go down there and be the our, our champion. Like I said, you know, you know, Martha Ross is already on board with a lot of stuff. She's 
Jerry Concerns, so those might call from the airport. We're the only one that's growing 2% in the whole area. And if you don't have reliable power, I'm afraid that won't last much longer. Um, that's why you're giving me a sword and not a lightsaber. <laughs> power. I wish you well, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else, Mike? No, I will do whatever you need me to do. I'll keep it a little bit useful. Got it? A quick, a quick clarification. You just said to Mike that DOT was taking 10 to 12 EDUs, but earlier you said 8 to 10. It's 8 to 10. I, I misspoke. But my point is, it's minimal. It's not 100. Because that was the concern, especially the other two municipalities also, especially the visual lancing, which is the very sensitive they have in going to their eye and eye, the inflow and infiltration. They had to go back through it. Whatever they could fix, they got more allocations. So they were they're extremely sensitized to the fact that, you know, how much are they going to take? So it's also being respectful to our partners by saying, look, at, we're going to minimize the impact here because we don't want to be disrespectful to the village of Lansing by saying, you struggle to plug all the holes and make sure that the flow is, is honest. And here all of a sudden, they, they walk in, and they haven't done that. They've been, at least for me, they've been very workable. But to come in and say, we'll just take half of them, thank you. So on that note, Pat Carroll for the Rector's Department. Hi, Pat. Hi. Good evening. How are you? Doing well, my friend. How are you? Very good. So just a couple quick things. We basically completed our online transition to online registrations. I have a question. Sure. Okay, you have, we plan to put POS stations in the office for people to register. What is POS? Point of sale. How do people know who do not have computers, how do they know to come into the office to so register? That's where our transition is still in the process. We do blank email through school. It's very difficult to get out stuff with people that don't. We do send little, like, half sheets in the backpacks home also, so if some people need to come in and register, they can still do so. Um, because there's still... There's still, yeah, there's still a lot of people without internet. Right. Doesn't, unfortunately. They don't have the internet or they can't afford a computer. Right, right. Their but kids... They, they can still register. call us on the phone or they can still come in the office and register. So... Um, and you're still printing out the little book. So the summer, yeah, that's in here too. We're working on getting the summer program worked out sooner this year. Um, people want to schedule their summer out earlier and earlier, obviously, for vacation and other stuff. So I'm hoping to have that out by the middle of April at the latest. Um, the library has asked to put a, a couple things in there. So um, hopefully we can get that done. You just don't want to see those who, who maybe can't afford these things. I think it would Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's very few people in town that probably don't, at this point, don't have a smartphone and you can do the same thing. You can register for your smartphone. So, That's true. Um, I know there's still a few out there that have flip phones, but not very many. But, but we're making progress, right? We are. We are. We're, we're narrowing that amount. Yes. Right? And, as and we, we find, have options. We have to find what's left over. We'll be working on creative ideas on how to use them. The key is we're not leaving anybody out. Yeah. Yes. No. Correct. No. We want all of We want to capture all those people. So, um, with the weather the last couple of days, the LVP and LSP registration, which is baseball and softball, have come in rather well. Um, as far as the parks, I just want to thank the highway department. They did a great job judging Sand Creek again. Um, cleaned up the park beautifully. Um, and it was a lot of material, way more than I expected. So, um, we've just been addressing some, we've had some unfortunate damage to the playgrounds the last couple of weeks, so we've been addressing that. Um, I wouldn't say vandalism, it's more kids being destructive, but, so we've been addressing that the last couple of days. We had some fence repair, we had to do a mother bill, and some flooding kind of just pulled the fence away from the poles, so. Um, something that's not in my report that I, I wish I had, I don't know why it slipped my mind, but I would like to thank Maureen Jail for her years of service. Um, she's done an excellent job, and I'm really going to miss her, so. When's her last day? She will probably be done next Friday. So she'll have 
she'll stay on for a few days to train the new person. How long has she been? The wife? 15 years, I believe. That's a retired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is so, she is she playing on the lateral position, perhaps, or yes, perhaps, perhaps strong, perhaps yes. Any questions, comments? The person that taking your place. You person. Yes. You person, Jennifer. Yes. You want to tell us a little bit about the process? I was that you had a very uh, process was very popular position. Very, yeah. We, I mean, we had. 20 some applicants. Um, we narrowed it down to five uh, within the office, the five that we felt were, would have best fit the position. Um, we hired or offered a position to someone that we felt best fit the position. She's worked in an athletic department office and the principal's office and um, has worked with the softwares that we have in place now and work with the school closely with, so it um, just seemed like the best, best fit for the office. Okay. Well, we have a motion. We're going to put that on our agenda. We can just bundle this all together if you want. Just, I think it's uh, number 19. Jeff's going to kill you, but yeah. <laughs> you're jumping all over the place. <laughs> I'm trying to consolidate and yet be thorough and also wind my lens at the same time and yet be focused, um, which I am. And you're here. Before you have any questions about this proposal, as opposed to having you there and talking, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, I mean, do you have any concerns about hiring this person that you recommend? Do I have any concerns? I have no concerns. I have no concerns. <laughs> Should have had, you should have mentioned that in the morning. <laughs> I have a question about the parks. No. What projects will be done on Lovego? So, and today I got a check from Lions Club. Um, they, they're donating a bunch of money to do some improvements in Lovego. Can you tell us how much this amount you need? It was $2,050. Um, so we're going to do a small paper project around the gazebo in Ludlowville. Um, they're going to replace the basketball backboard and hoop. Um, we're going to put a fence topper on the fence along the walls. Um, I'm trying to think there's one more. Oh, we're going to paint the flagpoles. They, they have volunteered to, probably with Cricket's help, hopefully, um, we'll take down the flagpoles in Ludlowville and Myers <laughs> and have those painted. So, yes, very generous donation by Lions Club. Nice. Nice. Any other questions? No. Comments? It's up to the board if you want to move it forward. We can wait. If you want to go in the order. It's entirely, it doesn't matter either way. I think Deb would like to have it in the order that it's here. It makes it easier for her. Yeah, we'll, we'll just wait and we'll go in. Thanks, Pat. Bring it up. Dr. Dredge, how are you? Uh, uh, thank you. So, well, anyways, um, I guess we'll get started with spring work. Uh, apparently, we'll be taking down some flagpoles. No, anyways, I just, I just like to, you know, kind of thank, you know, for kind of getting the math plan report started there for the DOT thing. I believe the conversation started with me in October. We've had a lot of facts, figures, and stuff thrown at us. We've had a lot of discussion. I guess. As, as the person that kind of manages the sewer flow and all that infrastructure, um, I just feel much more comfortable giving something, you know, these guys present stuff and it all looks reasonable and, and, and in place, but, but moving forward with, you know, T.G. Miller doing that, you know, puts in perspective to really match up what they're saying, with, you know, for our information. So it certainly gives me a better feel of what we're really looking at. Said the biggest concern was is the rest of the county property when we started, of course. So that being backed out made me feel much, much better. So, um, so I just kind of appreciate moving that forward. Um, <clears throat> kind of one thing that goes along with the state. I mean, I, I, I wish, I, I wish people in the state had the passion to, you know, support our infrastructure as much as we do things like worrying about 
you know, driver's license for illegals or whatever. You know, as a person that's helped, you know, several people in the last couple of years here to get through the process of their CDLs and stuff, the, the unbelievable amount of paperwork that they're, they're required to walk in there with to even be able to take their permit and then move forward on that, I just, you know, I think the system's greatly flawed. As noted, the governor's initial budget is out with cuts to our infrastructure money that we receive as a reimbursement. So I find that kind of ironic that, you know, a guy stands on a, you know, on a DOT truck and we're worried about snowstorms and we're doing this and we're doing that, but at the end of the day, like, well, I got money to use other way, so we'll take it from the folks that really need it. So um, I'll kind of leave with that. Um, the, the state, the Congress people and the Senate people of the state, obviously, in their rendition of the budget, has that money included back in for us. So obviously they're in for a fight because the tax cap's all a part of the puzzle. You know, the governor says no deal, no tax cap, and you know, unfortunately, we at the local level get hurt by it the nonsense that goes on because people just can't work across the aisle and work for the common good of all of us. So hopefully they get that straight out. Anyways, moving forward on that, um, maybe in for a little more winter at the end of this week. Hopefully this will be the last bout. Um, we've, we went through basically with 80% of our winter kind of done for this year, so to speak, we've used 90% of our salt. So we're kind of on track for like last year where, you know, it, which you squeeze if we have much going on at the end of 19. Um, but hopefully we'll manage through that. Um, we've been working on some crush work and stuff. Uh, you know, Mikey's been working his tail off on just kind of re-getting through all of our annual inventory list for our, for our assets and stuff, just to, to kind of show that all up solid for our insurance companies and stuff. Um, we can't thank him enough for that. Uh, Generators on order for here, speaking of unreliable power. Um, we've received a couple pieces of that. We should be seeing the generator itself sometime next week. Looking to schedule that in for installation sometime in the month of April. Um, we've kind of got a plan factored in. We have you know a portable generator that we use for our pump stations and things like that. That are you know, we're gonna be able to temporarily wire in. So when the process starts, you know, if we run into a stand or something, but it essentially keeps everybody working through the day at the town hall with no worries of, you know, saying, well, Rand, you're standing, you know, I know it's supposed to be half a day, but you know what, I guess you can't work tomorrow either. So, so I think we've got a good plan formulated for that. As we get closer, I certainly keep everybody, uh, you know, updated on that. So um, obviously we made great headway with the, project. I mean, it's obviously, I mean, as most of you know, this is this has been in the works for 15 years, so to speak. You know, we, we physically had the permit for the last couple of years, but the winter weather has just not been conducive to, to do it. We had a small window, you know, and we got the stuff here. The guys busted their hump. I mean, I, I, I really can't thank, you know, my crew enough for, because as we got the equipment, of course, we still have the overnight snowstorms. You know, guys are out in the morning early, but it's like, you know, they're like back in park. We're down there, we're on it. Um, you know, it took us about six days to actually move. And the number I calculated up was about 5,000 cars. So that's a lot. Um, the nice part was, obviously, you see the, the, the bill's a little heavy on it, but at the end of the day, it probably cost us about $10,000 to actually build something what I recouped in good usable gravel, you know, certainly is saved on the other side. So, so it's almost a win-win, almost. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say by the end of tomorrow, everything will be removed off Salt Point. Um, we're going to be shy left and kind of getting stuff rough back in and dries out. We'll get things seated back down. I mean, we'll we'll do what we do. Just uh, you know, we, the DEC's kind of got to mix their stuff. The, looking at that they kind of want to restore it with, but, you know, it's, it's workable, so we just want to make sure that we get a return to, you know, as natural an environment we can. So, so that's what I'm, you know, after that, it's dried out, we can kind of get things seated, get the silt fence picked up, you know, everything mulched back in, and, you know, hopefully by the end of May, it'd be like it never happened. I would like to talk with them about their banks so you okay. can diversify it. Yeah, so I, I have that, that's in our, 
you know, in our paperwork from, you know, from the event stuff. So, um, but like I said, that, that worked out well because we had to be out last Friday um, as far as, you know, anything after March 15th. The like, timing was incredible. Don't, don't, don't touch the screen <laughs> because the trout, they've actually been stocking and there, you know, there's, there's a lot of trout activity going on. So, um, I just, the timing worked out. The weather was perfect. We had that real cold week. Saved us a lot of wear and tear in the park on that side, obviously. So, uh, so no, that, that went great. Like I said, I just can't thank you guys enough, and I really have to. Mike's here. I mean, certainly, it's been a great relationship we formerly back with the county. I mean, you know, thanks to, to Jeff Smith and you know his right hand man Nick Enzyme that's there, and uh, they were fabulous. You know, we were in a bind with Mike. You know, with our trucks harnessed up and stuff to try and still take care of snow and yeah, move the stuff out of the park. So. You know, a couple of days he sat me up three or four trucks and we got the stuff out of there and that's you know save my bacon save pat more than mine because <laughs> you know renovate right the park so well to your credit you were doing shared services before it was shared services yeah so but no like i said just certainly want to throw that out there and you know thank them immensely because they've you know that helped incredibly to, to make this kind of all come together in a couple weeks span and the DC happy and the Army Corps and everybody. So, um, DC was out a couple times while we did it, you know, more than happy with what's going on, and you know, everybody. So, no complaints, everything went well, and uh, the end results are, I think, going to be fabulous for everybody. And then certainly, you know, the end time officer just know that how much nicer it should be for the, you know, for the fish to migrate up to down the stream where, you know, they you know, had one channel, now they, you know, put back to their 150 feet or whatever. So, so, excellent. Other than that, I guess. I do want to add a comment about how you had seven day work week for a couple of weeks there. Eh, all in good time. We fun. appreciate your extra time spent getting everything ready. Excellent. Well, thank you. So, but, you know, it's easy when it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and when your wife's busy all weekend. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. Keeps you in good graces, right? Yeah, I have a question. <laughs> Br brush pickup? Oh uh, yes, uh, actually yes. Uh, brush pickup will be the week of April 29th. Uh, we'll schedule the same same week for the village, so we will actually start. The village typically takes us about a half a day. We'll start out there on that morning, get those folks picked up, and work our way across town. And, and where will you be putting it? I've noticed your piles rather. Than well, unfortunately, Cuyahoga County um, it's been taken care of us for the last several years at a great rate. Their machine just kind of went to the point where it's beyond fixed. Uh -huh. They decided they're not going to fix it. Um, they looked at a couple grants, haven't had any success with that yet because I mean those machines are they're a million and a half dollars or so. So um, I've got to call into a couple of the people that had done it for us previous years. I haven't had great results with callbacks yet. It's, you know, two months ago they were pounding on the door wanting to do it today. But right. um, so we're working on that. We we feasibly have room to, to make it work because that's we're kind of in the same situation we were last year. But, uh, okay. you know, but we'll, we'll make it fit. And, uh, so April 29th is the Monday, that's when it starts. Yep. So, yep, we ask people to have a curbside by you know, 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in the village, of course. Um, they have a little bit of noise. And noise. correct me if I'm wrong, and I sometimes am. Um, has that been posted on the website yet? Yes, well, it's, it, it's on the highway website. So if you go to the website and click the highway page, the, the information is on there. But okay. no, we just ask uh, to be curbside at just 6 a.m. Monday, uh, loosely piled, no, no plastic bags, things like that. But, uh, but, you know, it's nice to do it. You know, a lot of people certainly appreciate it. The phone, the couple of sunny days, the phone's been ringing off the hook, of course. So, um, but anyways, that's, that's what I got there. So. I just want to say, I drove back from New York City on February 20th, and you think back, that was that huge ice storm that yep. was covering the Northeast, and Lansing's roads were the nicest of the entire trip, yeah. by okay. far, without question. Um, and it was really noticeable how much nicer Lansing's roads were than the rest of the uh, trip. So I just wanted well, to Well, thanks, I appreciate that. You know, and I return that compliment goes out to, to the guys that yeah. did a fantastic job. And, it's not been an easy winter. You know, we, haven't had, we haven't had big storms, but it's just been nonstop, and we've actually had the five or six ice events that you know guys have been out running around, you know, from ten at night till two in the morning, just 
you know, make sure we keep the same as we've got the salt. Yeah, I appreciate I, that. I noticed the salt bills and all the truck repair and raw pieces that you guys have been doing. Well, yeah, I ordered 500 tons like five times, thinking it would be the last 500. But we're, we're getting there. This <laughs> <laughs> might be something, since we have a pattern here, it might be something to talk about during budget season being bumped up. Yeah, and like I say, you know, typically it goes through the cycles. I mean, you'll have years where you hit easy marks, and you know you got you got enough for a couple thousand ton left, and then next year you might eat into that. So we've been ahead of the game a little bit. So I'm hoping as the trend goes, you know we're gonna we're gonna be close. I don't I don't think we're gonna you know, we shouldn't have to rock that boat too much. So I mean, there's still some money available. I mean, like I said, 3,500 ton is typically what we order for a season. Um, yeah, obviously they give you up to 120 percent of the same cost, and then. Last year we got into over a little bit, so then of course the next 300 tons is a couple bucks more, and then 200 tons after that, then there's you know like 15, you know, so so it's just kind of important to kind of manage that. So uh, I typically you know look at put the same same order in on that, but uh, it has a way of usually cycling itself through, so we hopefully get caught back up. So okay. excellent. Okay, thank you. Thanks. We have.
one on dry work. So that's fairly significant. Also submitted under the Housing Affordability Infrastructure Grant, as uh, Mike has left, I believe, but the county is trying to encourage um, affordable housing and moderate income housing for Tompkins County. They put together a grant program up to $10,000 available with the project across the street for the town center land, for the town land. Uh, we put in a request to do the Dare State DOT uh, traffic inventory that we have to do as part of the next phase of development. So again, it will take a look at the entire 156 acres, where the different distribution points are, looking at the traffic counts, and then coming up with a phase development plan. So as you may recall, we got a $75,000 grant from Senator Helming last year to help pay for the infrastructure at the intersection there. Um, I believe that has also been in conversation with the Senator's office about another uh, grant to continue that funding. So we're trying to put together the pieces that over time delay. Um, Connie is here. She'll talk about the Ag Committee meeting coming up soon. Uh, land use uh, ordinance. Um, I was not there, but the planning board, I believe, got a, a copy of the different sections that have been completed up to this point. Again, there's a section on the definitions, there's a section on the, the back part of the um, of the map, and then also the charts. So there has been a lot of conversation between the Ag Committee and the Planning Board, back to the Ag Committee, and the Planning Board's looked at it another time. Under um, Dutch Harvest Farm, that was approved by the site plan uh, for a, a wedding venue up on 34B. Um, again, there was a lot of concern about certain stormwater. It was a very large disturbed area. They had to do a full swift for that particular project, and so that was approved. Uh, next amp, um, we've just got the swift uh, approval back from T.G. Miller um, yesterday. So we weren't able to get the final resolutions together until probably the April 8th meeting. So I had hoped we could do it on the 25th of March, but it's going to go on the 8th meeting. So again, I'm always too aggressive in trying to get things scheduled, I guess. You want to find uh, Asmika, Asmisha, I guess. Um, as you know, it's been another uh, wedding venue that was proposed for their rehab of an existing barn. Um, the uh, ZBA uh, will report had uh, had a request to have an interpretation of the land use of a wedding venue in the poverty zone uh, was discussed, as well as the definition of small, if that would apply to wedding venues as well as other events. And, the CBA heard that last night. I know Katrina was there and I myself. They denied their request to overturn that. So, um, they are now, uh, there was a meeting with the fire chief to look at the site plan. Uh, they have a couple of little tweaks and we're hoping that on the April 8th meeting we'll have the final version of that site plan ready. So, under um, the New York State DOT, I've also talked a little bit with the gentleman that were here earlier about trying to bring it onto the planning board agenda for the authorization and the planning board chair signed the subdivision plan for that. So I think we're getting all the final documents together in terms of the Monroe um, challenge or test. Zerati was a two-lot subdivision. It was approved on the 25th of February, and Carlos Wanda was approved on March 11th, and Lynn Davidson's got a lot line adjustment on schedule for April 8th. So that's what I have for you. So one of the concerns we're trying to address is the lighting down in Myers Park. And Pat's been working on some estimates out there. I really appreciate this. The illuminating. <laughs> <laughs> my gift to you. Um, the, uh, the, love ones. the, it's a large number of these solar. Um, well, one of the things you recommended is you put some of that in the Myers Park ramp together this year, and I think that's an excellent idea. We're still gathering data, should we go solar, or should we go with wires? The wires are tough because, as you know, the lake level is not very far from where we are. Even though you can get waterproof conduit and everything else, um, if you do solar, you can do them in phases. We're the most critical first. Uh, we'll let that have, have Patrick on that input. One thing we have noticed for us is with the fireworks is especially where you have the Ford Marina and the uh, Myers Park, that that fork right there as you come into the park, uh, that's dark. And uh, 
one of the things is that um, talking to Barry Ford, he bought the property where all those bushes stick out to come into the park. And so he plans on trimming those back and trying to widen that road a little bit if he can, at least his part, so that people that are walking or where their bicycles come into the park or out, they don't all of a sudden come that wide spot and here comes a boat or a truck. So there's a lot of positives going on here to try to make that park better. Um, and I think that lighting will be one of them that we'll uh, look at seriously and see the efficiency of the, of the solar or the efficiency of the, of the wire. Um, Last year, as you know, we had an upgrade for the, for the campers for the wiring, and we don't know what the extent of the, the cost would be to increase the wiring or the electricity again. <coughs> that would be cost prohibitive, uh, but these are all things we'll get all the options on the table and move forward to see what we think is the best for the town, especially if this for the place. Let me mention one other thing. Just You mentioned the word fireworks. Uh, that was one of the topics of the two wedding venues. And let me just let you know that the planning board, when they approved the Doug Marcus plan, they put in a method for notification of the neighbors and a process. So that once a registry is created, the town would get names and addresses and emails so that they could then forward the information ahead of time so that people would know. Uh, Asmicha has agreed that they will follow the same procedure, so hopefully that will be our, our standard operating procedure going forward. But I think it's something that certainly I'm sure the town board members have heard a little bit about. So I just want to let you know that I think the planning board is, is doing as much as they can to try to make the site plans better for everyone. Again, there are permitted uses. Um, and we may have some more conversation about that as we get through the land use ordinance and changes there as well. Okay. Good, thank you. Thank you. To our engineers report, uh, Dave and Eric has nothing today. Once again, my apologies, normally our Osabi meeting is first uh, Wednesday of the month, this was an anomaly. Uh, I think in the future, we'll be back in the first, so that we give people enough time to get things and get the engineering report. So, um, Act Committee, Kelly. I'll be brief. <laughs> we um, had our Act meeting on March 4th, and um, we had um, two guys from Geronimo Energy came, um, Todd Scott and Brett Hastings, who gave a presentation on solar. They're actually working between Southern Cuba and Northern Tompkins County, and they would like to lease 800 to 1,000 acres, and the smallest acreage they're looking at is like 40 acres. Um, it hasn't been too receptive for them because of our prime soils in our area. Um, so they took some, they, uh, some of the farmers did sign up to get more information. So they were going to visit with them. Um, they also wanted to take a look at our proposed solar energy or our energy law that we're looking at to see if they could give us any input. Um, John Fleming um, was going to make some comments on the last red line um, version that we had. So, uh, did he get those to you, Mike? I haven't seen them yet. Okay. Um, they all, you know, they've all looked at it and they took it, they took another version home with them this last time to study. So, but that's really not their forte, but John did have some comments to make, so and he's the co-chair. So, um, at the last meeting, as Mike mentioned, we we did the, the prime soils map as part of the proposed um, land or use ordinance, um, and uh, let's see. Our next meeting is going to be April first, April Fool's Day. <laughs> But um, we probably will not meet again until fall after that because of hopefully the land's going to dry up and people are going to be out on it and be able to get planting and all that done. So um, the guys are just, you know, they, they want to have input with what the town is doing. They, 
they mentioned that. Uh, I would like to propose, and I don't know when we could do this depending on work schedules, but I'd like to propose a meeting between the Ag Committee, the Town Board, and the Planning Board, just a little, just a round table discussion on some stuff. Would that be in the fall? It probably will have to be in the fall now, but a couple of them expressed that the Ag Committee is supposed to be, you know, giving back information to the town and the planning board as to how they think things should be or how, you know, and, and input on some of the things as far as the land use ordinance and all that, which I agree, that's part of, that was part of our mission to begin with. And some of them were more vocal than others. So, and I also, when the, the guys wanted to come from Geronimo for the presentation, I told them that, you know, <laughs> You're walking into a room that may not be the most friendly people in the world, but however, the guys all behave themselves pretty well, so <laughs> that worked out pretty good. Um, CJ came to our meeting, um, and I introduced her to the guys. Um, however, they feel very comfortable with Mike, so we're hoping that we can continue with him as our consultant. So I don't know what you guys have planned, but I'm just throwing it out there. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. I think these, uh, the guys from Geronimo realize that they're not going to be able to find the kind of acreage that they want, but they're still up there doing it. So they weren't the least bit pushy. They were very informative. And, I mean, I thought they were. So job was there. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? Um, I like the idea of the meeting. Well, I just think that, you know, I just think they need to express their feelings on some things. I think they feel that they sometimes are perfect. So, and, and if we could have it after, it's more convenient than during the day. What's it? If, if a meeting with the farmers is more convenient during the day, maybe something we can arrange that. Yeah, Instead well. Instead of nights. Night, yeah, yeah. Sometimes a little hard. Well, I'm gonna, we, we, we talked about it at the last meeting, and I'll definitely propose it again to them at this meeting and see what their schedule is. I know the one day when we had the meeting with the Cornell group, it was during the day here, and there were quite a few of them that came today, so, yeah. So, we'll see what works. So, a couple questions. Number one is the availability, um, and I obviously bounce off the farmers first when they're available. Mm -hmm. Ask you at 7 o'clock in the morning, I don't know, um, or 6 30, I know they're up four hours by that time. Yeah, well, usually so, they're up in cows at that time, so yeah, you know, whatever. Good morning is, you know. Um, two other things the solar law going forward, um, do you think we will have enough input by this last meeting, or maybe have them extend it a month and have them send their comments by email or something before we move forward? I'm not going to feel comfortable since. A lot of times they're the ones most affected. Yeah, I, I think that um, we'll send out, I'll talk with Mike and Sue, but we'll send an email out to them and make sure that they, I, I'm really surprised that John, I know he's out of town right now, but he had planned to get his comments together and get them to Mike, so. Um, I mean, we can still receive them as we, as this gets massaged right. before, we still have to have our attorney look at it also and weigh in. Um, also, we have to have discussions. The one thing I was thinking is that we have a consensus that a certain type of soil won't be allowed. Right. Because that's a proposal. On top of that, we also have the overlay of where the three phase power is. Somehow, if you haven't already, put the map together and say, okay, here's the one overlay, get on top of it. So these are the wires that are available with three phase power that are not prime farmland. Right. Those are the ones available for solar facilities to be considered in the future if someone wants to approach someone to rent the land and put that in like next amp or someone else. Right, right. And, and Mike has done a great job with the prime soil stamp and the overlay and all of that. So they have a pretty good idea. So I, I just think that, and they know that they can't be forced to lease their land for solar if they don't want to. But it's just, uh, 
they're concerned, you know, because some of the some of the land they do lease from landowners, and if those landowners get a really good deal from the solar companies, of course they're going to take it. I mean, that's what happened up on Jerry Smith Road. And you can't fault the the landowner, but when the farmer has run that land for years and years and years and put all that money into building that land up so it's really good and, and has very good production, it's kind of disheartening to them to think that it can just be taken away from them. So, it's true. Yeah, let me also add one more thing. Um, the um, county is now doing an update of the agricultural um, districts. Right. And the tunes farm is being to concerned. Get back in. Yeah. Yes. So they're they're asking if the town board would would maybe uh, discuss or pass a motion saying that they endorse the concept of having the Mattoon farm or Kingdom farm put in the agricultural districts. So that's one thing that would be good. Yes. Do we need to do that tonight? Well, if you if you just generally talk about it, say please yes. Or I could just send I mean, an email. We, I, I discussed that with you guys. I think at last month's meeting, the Matunas wanted to go back into the to the ag district. So, and they only do that. The county only does it so often. So, if we could get a yay from you guys, that would be great. Just a cloud. Just the voice vote. Uh, Connie, Connie, is anything going on with the tax request? No, I have well, not heard. I've not heard any more from Steve. Pat. He called me. I called him back. He's putting together a map, so okay. we're working on putting together something. Oh, okay. Is the forever farming. Right. This is to put his land in. In the is the forever farming is that the one? That's well, he out? wants to do a transition yeah. right. from dairy to just raising. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Not like not like he did with. not. Doesn't he want to? He wants to do the transfer development rights. Yes, yes. That's the yes. Same yes. 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 It doesn't make any difference what, he, what type of farm he has. Right, right. So, what kind of language would you like to have this resolution since we seem to be in consensus to move this forward as far as the Mattoons farm, or whatever its official name is, to be put back in the Ag District? Just that you endorse the. You support the nomination support the, the, of the putting, the ag, putting it back into the ag district or ag, agriculture plan. Right counties now. because the right counties. now it's it can be developed. I mean, do we need a letter of recommendation? Probably something signed by the. So you want to authorize that the town form a letter of recommendation for the Mattoon property to be put in the ag district? Yeah, I, Mike could probably pencil something on for you. I would say, and and then if you guys agree to do it. You can just well, how about if we authorize the supervisor to write a letter and sign? That's better. In support of the yeah, attorney. That would be great. That would be great. Okay. A second. Yeah, oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we said too quickly. Come on. Uh, we, well, we're a busy board. We're letting to get stuff done, right? right? So you're going to authorize the supportive. supervisor to write a letter, letter of support of putting of the land back in the letter of support. Good. Okay. And we have a, and Joe uh, made the motion, and I'm just signing it. And then when you're ready, I'll continue to talk. So this is a motion. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I use that as a segue to talk about our next one, which is the supervisor's red letter recommendation for the next hand. Um, the reason I brought this forward is because there was one, I also talked to Heather McDaniel about this, and she would be the one negotiating the, the pilot, if that's appropriate. And uh, to your recommendation, you thought that the planning board, you recommended that the planning board, and I'm not throwing stones when I say this, um, look at it first, that's fine. And we've had that other... Was, that was the example they gave us. Exactly right. There's been another example where the supervisor just did it. Right. But I thought out of courtesy and respect, we need to at least include the board in this before we just start writing letters and oh, by the way, guess what? So having said that, um, at some point, it's my understanding, having done further research along with Michael, that if these things don't get pilots, they don't get off the ground. Mm -hmm. And we know that homeowners get some sort of assistance uh, with these type of pilot programs. I mean, and I mean, we have 
we have two, right? That they're not throwing stones, I'm just using examples. So, and we also passed, them, passed a resolution that we also not have them exempt. So, having said that, I feel comfortable at least reaching out to the board and say, can we move this forward? I think we've at least given enough time for the planning board, unless, I don't think there's been any pushback on the planning board to do this. And the other thing is that, uh, in all fairness, TCAT's saying, are you going to do this or aren't you? And we, I think we've given ample time to at least, you know, absorb it and discuss it. So the big concern that the planning board was, was what was the number that was going to be negotiated? And they kept looking at different uh, counties, and it's all over the place. And so that's their concern. That's the concern I've heard is what number is going to be negotiated. That's really going to be up to this county. Uh, where and you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You just can't say, we'll have a letter of recommendation for this number. That's not up to us. You know, our job is to say, do you support them having a pilot and move forward, or don't you support it? And you're absolutely right. Is the pilots are a movable object until both parties can agree on it? Or not. If they can't, then then they, they walk away from the table. Simple as that. Um, the other thing is that having other pilots, for instance, for the Lansing market, they have to show either hardship or a need things of that nature, and the fact of the matter that these solar arrays won't they something will happen. The, the industry has a need, we understand that. So I'm singing the choir on this side. <laughs> so, on this side, I guess there's, I mean, I'm in favor of this now. I think we've given enough time to have this massage. Um, are we comfortable moving forward with this? Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you want to make? Yeah, yeah. We have a motion. We have a motion. To the motion. Authorizing the supervisor to write a letter of recommendation for the NICE pilot program. You want to second, Joe, since you sure. both are involved with solar? So, um, okay. So, Andre made the motion and Joe seconded it. Any further discussion? That was Munson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So, the next one is. We're going to have a resolution scheduling the public hearing for proposal of law number one, 2019, a local law to override the tax levy limit. Which is I can use the tax right. I'll make that motion. Also, good. Any further discussion? Is there any problem with any of this with our next meeting? Yeah, Well, here's the chicken and egg. Do you want to set the public hearing first and then vote on it? Do you want to vote on it and then set the public hearing? Public hearing time. Set the public hearing. It's in the motion. It's in the motion. So then what's your, what's your question? I was just checking to see if there was a issue at that time of day. I'm fine with it. Any further discussion? Mrs. Munson? Andrew Benson? Yes. Katrina Benkowitz? Yes. Joseph Wetmore? Yes. Edward Levine? Yes. Item number 19, resolution hiring Jenna Howler? Holler? Howler. 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> I will move it for full-time information aid in the park. I'll second it. Any further? So Andrew uh, made the motion. Joe seconded. Any further discussion? Mrs. Munson? Andrew Benson? Yes. Katrina Bakerwood? Yes. Joseph Wetmore? Yes. Andrew Levine? Yes. Item 20. Let me premise this before we get into this. We don't have to do item 20 tonight. I'm still <laughs> pushing it on the table. I didn't hear anything for four weeks. I, I, I checked the mailbox box to make sure nobody was missing. Uh, anything else? Uh, so, anyways. We can discuss this briefly tonight. We can move forward, whatever you're comfortable with. The money's not going to go anywhere. So I don't want to make you feel rushed, but if you have questions pop up, I can simply walk you through a little bit of where the numbers came from. This is this, this rascal right here. This is the one I sent everybody, hand delivered it. Uh, this also is the worksheet. If you don't have it, I think we can send it to everybody. This is the summation. Uh, our, this one I have here goes from 2013 until 2023. We also have one for 2020, I posted the spreadsheet. And what I did for the six month average of expenses is go through the actuals of uh, 17, 16, 15, 14, and 13. Those calculations are all on there. Um, that would be on. Let's see. See what it says. Page. So 
right here. These are the A's and B's. If you don't have a copy of this, I can make you a copy. These are all the figures that I hand wrote. I'll make you a copy when you yeah. box, okay? I'm simply just giving you an idea of what to look for. And what I did is I projected, and some of these could be tweaked, for instance, uh, moving money around, like for the, for the peer project, ball report. Those aren't going into reserves. Those have already been allocated, same with the generator. But I want you to look that over, and we may have some discussion via email the next few weeks or not. Uh, but I also want to maybe address the, um, of the water. Um, that we seem to have a high number there also. And there's no reason why we can't have another fund of 150000 for the water because that grade all takes about a third, 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 right? Between your water district and your, uh, your DB and your DA fund. And if we move enough money in there, which this proposal would do if you add on the, the sewer and water money over there, you pretty well got that covered in the reserve when and if it's allocated and approved. Well, I'm also looking at we've got several debts under a water fund a million six sitting in the bank. And I think we might be able to pay down some of those debts and especially get 4% on that money instead of paying 4% on that money. Um, there are some that are in the consolidated bar district we could. The other ones in, in special districts we can't. I understand that, but what we can't, I think we've got a lot of money sitting there and I think we can afford to pay down some of those debts. And I, I would like to look into that. I, would, I think that's a great idea. The other thing is that please keep in mind that for a lot of years, we didn't pay for equipment out of that even though we used it. Well, I understand. I I'm, I'm, just, right now. I'm just giving you more background information that that money generated by O&M. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very clear what we can spend down. We can't recoup right away unless you want to start raising more O&M, which but is the operation comes, maintenance part. It, it comes from two things. It comes from the taxation uh, on the tax bill for the districts, and it comes from the water bills. Either way, it can't be recovered fast. I understand that. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm looking at this and saying, there's a lot of money sitting there, and it doesn't need to be sitting there along with that next to it. I look forward to that discussion. That'll be fine. Cricket has something to say. Yes. Just in terms of thinking of that, um, there's money sitting there, but keep in mind, we have a lot of aging infrastructure. Uh, I've got a couple projects that's being looked at right now. There's 2,200 feet on Trimbammer Road where we've had multiple breaks. It, you know, so I'm saying maybe a couple of us should get together and have this discussion before we decide just to, you know what I mean? I agree, if you pay down debt, that's great, but, you know, I don't I don't want to pay down a bunch of debt and all of a sudden next year, like, uh, yeah, we need like 800000 to to do this, this, and this. So, I hear so you. it definitely needs to be part of that discussion because that's what that money essentially is built for. I, I think having a detailed discussion is good. I've been looking at the uh, last four years and it's been pretty constant sitting there. So it's been sitting there for a while. Yeah, well, and I'll be honest because in the past, as, as I said, I mean, we, we spent money on things that maybe should have been allocated different. Um, we've had many boards that, you know, hey, it works, right? Just keep patching it together, you know what I mean? It, it's just, we need to get this plan in motion mm -hmm. to utilize that money for what it's meant to be used for. Absolutely, preventative maintenance is our imperative. We're seeing the problem with NYSEG not doing that. Correct. And we're all feeling it on almost a weekly basis these days. Um, so I, I'm all for preventative yeah. maintenance. No, like I said, I just, I'm working on a couple projects right now and hopefully have some numbers for that here. Real short, okay. You know, shortly, so, so I just you know, sometimes, sometimes things happen for a reason, and this whole conversation, this enhanced conversation, it seems like now's the time, especially when we get in a comfort zone of the other funds, to widen that lens to say, okay, what are we doing with the water and sewer type of thing, and I think that would be a great idea to incorporate all our needs, and maybe for the next, get an idea of where your next five years are as far as this goes. What do you? You know, what do you think should happen, or should we save it in case? Prime example is Brickyard Road. It, the acidity there, I think you, you put a sleeve over the pipes now, where before, I could be wrong, it, it just used to eat. It wasn't just a, a normal uh, wear and tear. They just, the, the acid eat, ate right through it. Um, so having said that, these are good discussions to have as far as what maintenance you want to move forward with, and how do we do it, and how do we incorporate it also by spending money that we know that we won't be vulnerable. Right. We'll still get value. I mean, 
even if you do it this way, these are all good discussions to have. And I look forward to it because because I don't I don't know where all these these weak points are, but as we're finding them, I've got to find them ahead of time as opposed to at three o'clock. Right? Well, like I said, Trip Hammer, I know we we've discussed that. And kind of, you know, so, an example, I mean, that's that's potentially one hundred seventy thousand bucks right there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's so how quickly that one point six where we're just kind of hanging out can be, you know, point six. So I, I understand. <laughs> um, how long would it take to kind of get a five-year rough estimate of what you think is coming up? And I know you're not God and can't yeah. imagine everything, but just to get an idea of what, what's actually there and what actually ought to be spent uh, over the next yeah. four or five years. I mean, realistically, I mean, we should be spending a couple hundred thousand dollars a year on improving, you know, the system, you know, replacement pieces. So, yeah, so. Well, let's sit down and talk because, you know, there's a lot of money sitting there. There's a lot of debt sitting next to it. We shouldn't be putting money in the bank at half a percent. Well, I agree wholeheartedly, but like I said, I just, you know. But if, if we have projects to spend it on, let's let's get moving on them because I don't want somebody to lose their water. Well, hey, so slide it right over. I'll get her spent. <laughs> <laughs> rock and roll tonight. I mean, I got a hot board in my hand. I mean, what, I, what I'd recommend is we start these, as now we have moved it up a notch and started our email conversations now is that you also share with the whole board the email conversations and what your needs are so that we're all aware of this going forward so we may have a better understanding and maybe after when you're ready, I mean you have a lot on your plate, when you're ready, this is also something to consider. And the other thing is that, you know, we can move this money bit by bit. We don't have to move everything all at once. We can do a little bit here with the A and the, and the B and the DB and the DA, and then you can also talk about maybe the, the water and sewer uh, especially water, maybe in two months when he has time to do this. But well, there are ways that you can still keep moving forward in a methodical way. But I think this is also being educated for everybody. It's like, what's your vision in the next five years? And you go, oh boy, look at this. So I, I, I appreciate this, this is, uh, discussion. Yeah. Yes, yes, Michael. Let, let me just make a, a suggestion. One of my areas of expertise is doing a five-year capital plan, which is really what you're talking about. I think it probably makes a lot of sense to try to put it down on paper and do a five-year projection. I can work with Cricket if you'd like and try to put that together and then present it comprehensive um, to the town board so that you have a, a better perspective on things. I look forward to the positive results that will happen from that. Thank you. I would love to see a five-year capital plan, but not just on the water district, but on the whole town. I'll because start I think with one division and keep going. Yeah. That's, so let's start, with the, well, let's start with this, okay? Good. Next, um, well, but, but, but we've got a lot of money sitting in our fund balance, and you know, I, I don't want to look back at why it happened as much as looking how we want to move forward. Because I'm looking at the fund balance uh, as of the end of last year, and it was two million forty-three um, thousand dollars, and that's just for the eight fund. That's what we have in the fund balance. And which page are you on, Joe? Um, I had to print out the fund balance done for me. What I recommend, because you're trying to keep the board all together, is that I think we, since we're not going to do a lot of discussion, we need to have everyone on the same page with this. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can table this discussion until either emails going back and forth, scan this, so everyone else knows us, especially if Doug's not here either, mm -hmm. so we can discuss this and be prepared to either make some recommendations soon or move forward from there. Otherwise, it's going to be just information, okay, but without everyone else having that sheet in front of them. Um, I don't, I understand what you're saying, uh, and I'm okay with that, but not everybody has had time to look at this. So this is something that if you want to make some brief, yeah. maybe five minutes, and then yeah. well, we're not going to have any discussion on this tonight, but go ahead and see what, what you see, and that's fine. Okay, well, what I'm saying is in the A fund, and I know a bunch of this is reserved money, but most of it actually isn't, um, we have $2,043,000 in reserve money at the end of last year. And in our budget for the A fund alone, we were planning on spending $2,081,000. Or $2,081,000. We basically have enough in the reserve if you don't count the, you know, in the fund balance, you don't count the reserves, to pay for the entire year's budget. And that's that's a lot of money sitting in reserve. And I, you know, I just want people to understand how much we have sitting in reserve. And so I would suggest that most of these, filling up these reserve funds with that fund balance is clearly something we can do tonight because we have plenty of money sitting there 
And I think I can't stop. <laughs> I, I just I, I I can't stop. If you want to make a motion? And move that, I can't stop you. You're on, roll, you're on fire. Okay. Okay, somebody turn off the fire alarm. I don't want to get I don't get wet with the sprinkler. Oh, so, so what do you recommend, Joe? Um, the part that I'm not understanding is some of the highway stuff that you're moving around because I'm not clear um, exactly why we're moving the money into the highway fund and not into the reserve parts. The reserve parts I understand and it's very clear and I'm totally on board with that and we move that part. The highway fund money in which you're moving uh, money to uh, the highway fund with 342000 I need more information about that. The reason we're doing that is to bring it up to a six month fund balance. Okay. Because if you look at this piece of paper here, it'll be on page three. Okay? Page three. Uh, a little bit down, you see fund A and DA? I don't have that paper in front of me. I have a lot of them here. Alright. No, it's fine. It's okay. So. Nobody else has that paper here. <laughs> well, well, you should, but that's okay. Um, I'll just verbally tell you. I'm just saying, Katrina doesn't have it, Andrew doesn't have it. How about we do this? I want to do a five minute break, somebody's got to go to the potty, and we'll make some copies and go back in five minutes. Okay. 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 So, the board members are here, and everybody else is here. So, you should have one of these sheets that has, okay, we all see the sheet right here by itself. Okay. Then you have the sheet that Joe has a copy. Then you have uh, three sheets tabled together. It has draft on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, two sheets tabled together, and that is the calculation of the six months loan balance. Okay. Calculations going back uh, five years. Total expenses, then you need to take a six month average of that. So let me quickly tell you what you're seeing on my sheets which you're seeing on my sheet is your fund balance and reserves. All uh, by different category, and the notes on the side are me basically taking Ed's resolution and trying to understand what happens to all these numbers. And really, what it comes down to is, if we move all this money as per Ed's recommendation, we'll still have almost a million and a half sitting in fund balance, unrestricted. That we still need to figure out what we can do. Yep. So. Um, now, when you say over a million, is that in one fund or is that total? That's uh, sitting in the gate fund, actually. Now, the other fund is uh, in the uh, as much because we didn't move as much of that. So, the A fund, you'd have that $2 million. Um, this is at the end, right? Yeah. And when you take out, if you're on the third page, I guess, the third page or your three page sheet, I uh, look at the fund A and DA together. Uh, you see it comes out almost the same amount. Uh, I'm sure there's some fluctuation there. Um, These numbers are just slightly different because I'm dealing with December 31st numbers and you're probably dealing with more current numbers. We'll be off slightly. Right. Uh, also and January 1st. January 1st. Okay. January 1st. So this doesn't take a so there's, there's an interest payment that will happen between those two numbers. But there isn't, there isn't any tax money coming in yet, so this is yeah. at the end of the... Yeah. Even, even then, okay, even then, that's not... The, the real real number because you're still going to have other expenses coming in for a while and everything so but it gives you a good a general a good general idea so you look at the fund a and the da and of course you can't move b and db into a and da because you have two different generating two two different generating ways of revenue uh, where you your b and db are your sales tax so the fund balance if you move over to the fund balance for six months you sell those calculations uh, it's one thousand or one million six hundred ten uh, thousand three fifty one, and so you do that difference, and you see the parentheses means a negative fund balance. So for us to move three hundred forty two thousand five hundred seventy over to the DA from the A, that would give us five hundred seventy two thousand one ninety one left over. Now that five thousand seven hundred seven hundred uh, yeah five hundred seventy two thousand one seventy one of that. Milton Metals is 337, 500 of that. You move down to the next column. So now you have to ask the question, is that town center money? Because you sold the land. So I took that out and also may put that in a separate fund for town center money in case you need to build a road, in case you need to store water over there. Now you have something as a feeder program. 
So now you're down to 234,691 below that. Of that number, we encumbered $71,067 for the truck. So that knocks it down to 163,624 of that amount. So now we have these projects that we want to move money over into reserves. And if you look over to the next column, um, what you have there is 268,391. That's one month of a six month fund balance uh, reserve. So if you, so that to me, if you go from six months down to five months for your fund balance policy, you're basically gonna need, <coughs> let's go over one more column first of all, uh, which is basically uh, how much money you have to take out. You're down to 133,000. So these things, unless you wanna put all, all the sales money from the town in the big pot, I would recommend that you leave that for allocation over there. I would say we do that when we want to create the fund separately so that it's clear what we're doing. I totally agree with that. I also would, would recommend that we did not take out the expenses of our lawyer and everyone else in engineering to, to do this. So I, in, to be conservative, it's probably about 275000 not 337, Or even 250000 you probably want to put in that for your town center and leave the rest in the A fund as a reimbursement for these expenses. I think that's a fair thing. Um, I don't want to go back through and calculate every minute of every yeah. hour, yeah. but I think uh, to be responsible, let's say we have, um, as, my invest, as my investor broker said, you have a pot of money to put 250000 into the town center land fund. So that's allocated on that 337 and the difference rolls back into the big pot, which is the A fund. That may actually make you enough money, you may not even have to touch any of the six month fund balance. You may actually leave it at six months. But once again, we don't know what emergencies may happen here. I understand that six months of operating expenses. Yeah. Is that, is everyone comfortable so far as we walk through this? The town center land fund, are there restrictions on that? Is it just applicable to the town center? You can always change the fund definition if you want to afterwards. But I would say anything associated with the town center. It could be a path over there. It could be uh, stormwater. For instance, we talked about doing a stormwater plan for the whole lot, uh, the whole big lot. We talked about maybe if you have two developers and you're, and you're just a small section from connecting them, that the town does that on their dime so that you have two uh, uh, egress, regress. Uh, maybe do that. I mean, what to me, you would have to be involved in that area over there unless is something I'm missing here? And we can add to it. No, I'm just wondering. That makes sense. I mean, I think that amount of money is probably relevant to the size of the property and potential. Or what we can do is work on a definition and not move that money tonight into the town center. I think we can work on I, a I might feel better that. about that working on a definition. But at least we have a concept. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I want to be kind of wide on something because uh, there may be various things you want to do over there. So I'll give us some leverage to do other things. You know, maybe not sell some of that land off and do some kind of town function. I'm, it's a clean piece of paper. Right. I'm open-minded to anything. I just want to get these out there where everyone's and comfortable. And we're going to do a reserve. I want it to be fairly broad because I want to be yeah. able to do several things with it. And as we know, if it's in a reserve fund, it can only be used for those. And it's also, uh, it's also vulnerable to public referendum. I understand. That's why I want to keep it broad. Thank you, Calvin. So are we moving forward on the rest of the reserve? So let's go back to this first, let's go back to this first page, okay? Um, and these things show, evolve. Show me the first page. The page. You got one page. One has one page. Okay. Not the two page, three page. Okay. So these numbers at the top came from our um, reserve policy. Right. And it also indicates that within three years we'll address those. I think this is the third year we can do our due diligence and do that. So you look at what the goals are here, and you see what the balances are at 1, 119. Now, some of that may have changed since then because we, there is a slight amount of interest, like 0.1%, which we'll talk about later at a different time as far as investments go. Yeah. But, um, so you look at what the difference is, and that's where that 134 comes in um, for all these, these, these different categories, either from the A or the DA. If you, and these are what the um, allocations are down below that. What we're, what we're moving in from A fund to building repair and uh, moving from 6319 to A fund, all those things are down below that. The last four lines, allocate, 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 I think those are just, um, you can't really allocate an A fund. You can say, I'm going to reserve this money 
in the spirit, but you're not going to put it towards anything. Because we already talked about, for instance, the, the generator project. Mm -hmm. So that's going to come out of the A fund. We already talked about the door project, but it actually might be more than 25000 So that's for, for a discussion. I don't think we can call the peer project a peer project without, we're at a very initial stage in that. I would take those four off the table for right now. Yeah. Those last four. I, I think you're, I think they're um, out there so the public. I think they need to be out there so the public knows this and they're thinking about. It. I think that's what the budget really. Well, I would, to I would take I would take pure project off because there really hasn't been any. The, you know that wants to come back. Principal cell point is just Six. not even discussing it yet, so we okay. don't want to get ahead of. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Um, I would also like to add a website update because we're going to be talking about ten to fifteen thousand on that. I'd like to put it out there. Absolutely, but back to the, the 10,000 could just be a general solve point. You've got technology above there. Moving it up to 20,000, you can always bump that up more if you want to make it 30,000. Well, since we're going to spend it possibly this year, I'd like to put it just as a, a fund allocation and say, this is what we're looking at. I'll talk about it more in our report. Um, but I, I'd like to put 15 on the uh, allocation uh, so we have some money there. That we're, let people know that we're thinking about. Let's take the ten off the peer project. Well, I think you no, could no, leave it as a, you could leave that as a salt, salt point. point allocation, which could include that if it proceeds to that point. So take peer just off. The just salt take point. peer off. So this would be a salt point. Okay. Because I put down the fifteen for our website work. Okay. Now, let's okay, make what, sure we do the door project. Yes. Okay, these are all discussions that we can have in the next meeting. Um, I think for, for time's sake and for Deb Sandy, we should probably move maybe some stuff that's in the resolution or tweak it tonight. We can definitely have another um, active uh, discussion and get another resolution going for our next meeting in, in April. We can still be, this could be a process. Okay, so we don't have to do it all, all tonight. So if we can. Hold on. Go ahead. I have one question. Is the basketball court allocation money included in this? We had that discussion, didn't we? We did. It's a, and it listed. Should, was it in the budget? It was 27,000 listed. It's yeah. listed here. Yeah. Is that what was? Yeah. Yeah. Sure it's on the 27,000 on the list of money that we want to spend. So if you guys don't pass this to mm -hmm. I can't get this done. Correct. No, no. What this is is that, I mean, we're going to allocate this, which means when it comes due, like when the generator comes due, when, when the budget mod comes in, we'll say, okay, that's for that, and we're okay with it. Okay. You're getting the pre So we see it coming. Did it's like, I have something to do? <laughs> <laughs> you got a whole lot of money on the top um, You had, you had, a, <laughs> there's, there's like 600,000 on yours. You have 125,968 on yours. Okay, so I'll do that. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. And you also have 150,000 from the from the B fund. The subs. Is that almost like? Excuse me. Is that like 200? Do you need a Snickers? Are you okay? Okay. But no, the generators included in that. Take care of that stuff. Right? Generators on. Yes. Yep. Gotcha. So I guess in spirit we can say these allocations we're okay with them coming through, and we have to finalize them. So be it. So when it comes through, when the bill comes through, we know that they're going to be passed. Okay. That's all. Good clarity. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Back to the revolution. I'm on the map. Okay. Given what I've been reading here, I would like to move the resolution to uh, pool money in these uh, reserve funds. And I would like to get an updated version of this uh, list of what the reserve funds will be after we've done this. This page, updated with the new numbers on it. Well, they will be because they'll be because it shows it right there. Yeah, but I'll have this one done. Once we transfer the money, you'll see it. Yes, yes. Absolutely. You'll see it actually. You 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 probably see it every month that you check the report. Mm -hmm. The first page, you'll see all the reserve funds right there. Right, I know. I just want one that's got all this worked out, so I'm starting to see where our fund balance is. Yeah. This report. So I'll, when will that be available? Well, we'll move the money tonight. Okay. And. We'll let Charmaine work it in the next few days. Okay, so the week it should be. I okay. think that would be fine. Perfect. So I'll move this. So, so you wait, I, can I just ask for a little clarification? The, exactly the way it is, you're not changing any of these numbers? I'm not changing any numbers. Well, let me review it real fast because, you know, second mic's the one's getting cheese, right? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so shocked I'm the one saying this. 
You know, it's like unbelievable. I've been working out the resolution, not out of the so I know it was going to start. I'm buying paper and all that. The only difference we have here is that these are all identical to the notes where we move these things. Um, We also have it that that's a DB, so all these on these notes are correct. And so you get to allocate. The only difference on here is that what's included in the resolution, remember, is to take that A fund and drop it down a bit and transfer it to the DA fund. So so Craig has six months. So excuse me, now it's up to about six hundred thousand. Is that okay? That's okay. Yeah. That, that'll, that'll get you next week. Okay. Got your little walking around money? <laughs> he says I show you. I was going to say, where's that guy from which coming? Where are those four trucks coming from? Exactly. Uh, so on that note, that's the only thing missing on this sheet, which is in the in the resolution. So the resolution is I, I was working on the resolution, not your sheets, because I didn't have your sheets. So, so Joe made the motion. Yes. Yeah, yeah, fine. Second. Why not? You two are working well together. Okay. okay. Take turns. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Sorry, guys. I think we had one. Yeah, really? So, Mrs. Munson? And for Beth says. Trina Bakelwitz? Yes. Joseph Wetmore? Yes. Edward Levine? Yes. I spent a lot of time looking at these numbers when I tried to do it. Um, All right. Now we're up to budget bonds. I got a budget bond movement. I'll second it. I got a second. I didn't hear who the first. I know the first. Katrina uh, uh, got radical and actually second. We made the this time. She was in. Any further discussion? Ms. Munson? Andrew Benson? Yes. 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 Okay. Board member reports. Please, Jones. I want to hear about it. If you no, got no, it. I'm listed first. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to do this, if you need to do this in like a like a four part series, feel free, okay? Go ahead, Andrew. I just wanted to comment that um, the Lansing Youth Services is going to have a spaghetti supper on May 3rd. Everyone is invited. Um, they're using the hall at All Saints Church, which they do every year. It's a it's a fundraiser for them, but it's also uh, an educational event for the kids. Some of the kids that we serve uh, have never or don't have a lot of interaction with with other people, and, and we train them how to take orders. We train them how to bring the spaghetti order to the person. So it's a really wonderful little event. And uh, I know Ed always gets free tickets. I don't know if all of you guys will get free tickets. But if, you have, if you're free that night, please come and support it because it's one of the best events that they've done. That's amazing. That's it. Because I talked about the other ones. Hey, Joe. <laughs> on website, um, I talked with Guy a little bit about this. The proposals that I'm looking at are all coming in uh, as three to five year proposals. Most of them are somewhere in the four to five thousand dollar range per year. That includes a lot of stuff. What I would like to do is get the board's blessing to be able to put together a proposal and put this out to bid. It's it's questionable as to whether we legally have to, but I think it's clear for us to do it that way given that there's five different proposals from companies essentially doing the same thing. That we, we put out a bid, that we put not as lowest bid, but best value, and I put together a set of criteria of what we're looking for in website design. Okay. Um, so I guess I would lean on our IT guy to see what really is needed what's wanted um, and what's feasible and what is an annual fee and what isn't and do a five-year plan of what the expenses are that would be good also because this is an annual fee right yeah some of them for, um, are loaded up front so there's a lot of first year and a little bit of the previous years others have higher amounts each year it depends on what plan you're looking at and we also have other people out there that do things once and can come in and service them also right sure so we should explore all possibilities. Uh, we also need to find out what those costs would be, what the options are. And then um, I think we can make progress with that and move forward. Um, I don't want to blindly just put a number out there and say go with it. I can really see what the options are. 
because a small example, I'm not throwing stones when I say this, um, the sliding door is going to be down about 40,000. When you get the bathrooms doors, now you're almost close to 50. Okay, pick your priorities, which ones you want to go through first, um, and see what, how much money is left over. I'm not saying, I, I don't have a yay or a nay in this, I'm simply saying that the more research we do, we find out what our priorities are and go from there. And I also understand, I get your point, I've seen these other websites also, some of them I like a lot better, some of this might be tweaked. Let's have a serious discussion what the options are and what the payment is, not so much what, what the scope of the work is, but here's what, what uh, plan A could be, what plan B, what plan C is, see what the prices are, and see what we get for those prices and go from there. I, I have, I've got, well, I've got four different proposals. But also we have, nothing personal, but we also have a person right there. I have is, is, it, is there also? Is, is there also. Okay, good, that's good information. So work together and give us something maybe we can send out and we can have a discussion at the next That's what I'm saying is the next step is uh, I think we want to talk about putting something out for bid and I'm suggesting we put together a set of criteria so that we can have something to actually discuss and I'm just trying to see if the board's in that uh, realm or not. How the best the board feel? I would like to see the specs laid out so I understand what we're actually yeah. yeah, I also like to see what the options are. A lot of times you go with options A, B, or C. Do you want this? Do you want this and this? Do you want this, this, and this? Right? So, so, so Joe, just maybe share, because I don't think I need the rest of the board because you and I were the one working on it. So maybe share with the rest of the board all those four proposals that we already have. So they have a little more information. Can you send them to us? I mean, because once yeah. again, do you I don't have, want to, I don't, him or I can, yeah, either one of them. I just have paper versions. I don't have electronic. Okay. Do you, have, do you have electronic? Yeah, I can, I can email those to you. Well, I can scan them, and then if we have questions, we can talk okay. during, okay. The, during the next month, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. No, it's a good conversation. I think there's, I think we're, 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 we're narrowing what, we, what we're looking for. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot out there. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going Go to TCOG. Um, I'd like to share with you. Uh, not much there. I, I, I'm just going to try to skip over some of these. I went to the TCOG meeting. We talked about some stuff. I will send this out to you by email. Okay. Um, went to the FEMA meeting. Um, FEMA's working on uh, a new set of flood maps. Um, but they're not uh, dealing with uh, lands right now because lands has dealt with the last round of flood maps. Um, they're trying to work out the whole county and do a finalized set of new flood maps that will be coming out probably in about three years. Um, how much detail do you want me to go into the Association of County? What would you like to know? I went to a, a, well, a I different. Uh, we've all been to them. So, but, but if you have a brilliant nugget of information, or if you want to share, share on an email, we can always share them. Well, I'll send this. I'll send my whole written thing around to everybody. Okay. Um, the, the highlights is I spent a lot of time with uh, fund balance workshops, and I want to go over our fund balance policy. I haven't had a chance. I got the electronic version. There's some tweaking on it that really ought to be uh, done um, to clean it up. Um, one sort of thing on multi-year capital planning. I'm glad to see the bank's going to take a lead on that and I'm going to work with them on it. Um, census is something that's coming up that we all ought to be paying attention to because that's going to really affect the allocation of federal funds. Um, open meetings law, I'm concerned. Um, it's a usual Robert Friedman uh, discussion. But uh, it's always interesting to see what different towns talk to and ask. And one of the things that came up is really the way our zoning revision committee has been acting is not really important to open meetings because um, the, me the uh, meetings are not announced. You have to kind of know when they are um, in order to come to them. They're not on, on website. I think they are now, but it's been a problem in the past. And the other problem is the public can't really follow the discussion if it isn't seeing the documents involved. And so we really need to get the documents out there because if we're sitting up here saying, well, you know, if you go to item nine, I think it ought to be approved in this district, this district, this district, 
the audience can't follow that unless they have a way of getting it. So I really want to get more of these documents up on the uh, website so the public has a chance of following it. Why don't you just tape them? Hmm? Tape them. Tape them. They, they need to see the documents? No, they need to see it before the, the documents. I understand that, but also tape it. I would love to have all our meetings taped on the web. But this is this is separate. This is you can't follow the discussion if you aren't seeing the documents that are being discussed. Well, as we evolve into our full-time planner, that's a discussion to have with CJ as we move forward. Yes. Um, uh, one of the things that I see is that our procurement policy ought to have an anti-discrimination clause in it. It protects the town uh, to say this is one of the things that we're uh, considering when doing procurements is that we're not uh, discriminating based on the usual list of uh, protected classes. Bless you. Um, and so I would recommend that we amend our procurement policy after that. Um, Guy, what do you think of that? It's fine. It's already prohibited by law. But it just says, it just says we're, we're paying attention to that. Okay. Okay. Um, that, that's what the legal staff of the Association of Towns is recommending. Okay. Um, and so I will send around the rest of the report. That's that's my abbreviated version <laughs> because time is of importance. Thank you. Okay. I missed the I.O. meeting. I'm trying to think if it was snowy and slippery, was that the last one? <laughs> uh, it was snowy and slippery. Um, Jennifer Krakus gave her final report on the accumulated water quality projects, which is going on in each town and finding out what kind of projects they're working on. Um, they're looking really heavily at the city of Ithaca, who's trying to develop a drinking water source protection plan, and they've got a proposal going in and out on that. Um, and that was the main topic of the discussion. And I went to the CBA meeting, and it was well attended, again. <laughs> <laughs> and they're certainly earning their wage. And it's an excellent meeting to go to because it, they do a great professional job. Good. So that's all I have to say. You want to share anything, Deb? No, I'm good. <laughs> Just the, I need the maps for the intermunicipal agreement to get that up to speed. That we're trying to get each individual service area map. All the maps exist, they're just not in one place. Um, Comptroller hasn't responded on District 3, but they also haven't re replied to the recent um, documents we delivered. So I think it has been sent to the financial and it's cleared legal and compliance. You don't know that. And thinking about the procurement policy, if you're going to throw in anti-discrimination, then you might want to also put in McBride Fair Practices Act, OFAC, FNKA, Executive Order 30224, TEA, Iran Divestment Act, and all the other requirements of law that you have to take into account when you're doing procurement. I would also probably say department lists, but I think they're in there. We have to run that by the association of towns. You can if you want, but they're all requirements. And if you want to get the federal stuff, there's more. But <clears throat> the general policies of the town cover that stuff. I would be careful in, in how I state some of those because you don't want to have it phrased in such a way so that it precludes granting contracting preferences to MWBE and disabled owned businesses. You're saying you're not allowed to discriminate based upon something like the sex of the business owner or the bidder, but MWBE says you're supposed to discriminate in favor of minority and women owned businesses. I think you've got to strike that balance somehow. I'm not sure that I agree that in the policy is the best place to put that as opposed to on a broader or macro general town policy basis, but if you want to put it in the policy, that's fine, and I don't see a problem with it. I can just see where it could, it could be misconstrued on occasion. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah good advice. Well, I mean, I just think it's not as easy as plug and play. So I think I, think, I don't have any problem with it. I think it's it's going to require a deft touch with language mm -hmm. because I would want to make sure that, for instance, if you're going to do best value bidding, 
um, especially a lot of the New York street grant requirements are going to mandate that you hire a certain amount of MWB or that you buy American. And a buy American mandate can be construed as an, as, a, as an act that's against or contrary to the interests of foreign nationals. If you're discriminating against me because I'm from Thailand, no, we're just required to buy American. So it sounds silly, but there's actually cases on this stuff in the procurement stuff. And the Office of General Services of the State of New York has some good clauses that, you, that strike that balance, and that might be a good place to start looking. Okay. Um, we say buy American, we got burned between buy American and buy American. <coughs> there is a difference. There are several different classifications, and if you don't get your certification on the day that you buy it, yeah. you probably will never in a million years get it. Lowe's does not know what was on the shelf on a specific day if that's your source. Uh, so. Okay. Yes, thank you. So, briefly through here, there's no great really down in most of these. But we discussed the financials, we made great progress tonight. Step program for our employees, that's something we need to have a further uh, discussion on. Uh, the step program, and uh, I think we'll probably table that until next uh, big slide. Um, and our largest supervisory board, we talked about consolidated district number three, four, five, and six. Um, we also did the investment. Um, I met, uh, Charmaine and I have met with two of the three banks. We have a third one, I think, scheduled next week, so hopefully we'll have some suggestions uh, moving forward on a variety of different things. Not only is it what you do with the lump of money you have left over after six months, what you do with the lump of money you have now at the start that is your operating capital. Right now, we're not getting a very large investment, 0.1%, 0.2%. That, I think we can get a higher rate. And that is the whole lump. That's everything. So I think we can make up a simple math for a million bucks. 1% is $10,000 that you don't have to find from out there. Because 14,000 is one cent, as we all know, right? Approximately. Um, we did the sewer MOU, uh, the OT update, pavilion update. Something should be happening when you're not doing everything else. But you're also proactive and you have a lot of stuff that ready to go. So that's wonderful. Dredging, we've done that. Uh, the connection with the town hall, the highway department. Uh, you've got two bids out of three. At some point, when do you say we've done our due diligence and to move forward? And that you'll come. Speaking of which, the, the generator project last Thursday when the power went out and we're dead in the water. Um, once that generator comes up, they'll be able to continue. And then we'll be able to talk back and forth, hopefully, with the highway department plus the emergency preparedness, you now have more facilities for people to sleep. And they'll have running water so they can do sponge bath or what else. Um, SWIFT 911, thank you for that tip. Uh, it's, in, it's implemented, once again, another way to get information out to people. Of not just the fact that roads washed out, but also for your rec department, as you talked about, right? Okay, and as we say, if you can do it six times, you're going to reach most of them. But nothing's perfect. Um, Soil law update, we talked about that. Um, I also went to the microgrid um, summit. I was involved the, the county and the airport. The airport wants to be on a microgrid for a day and a half. And I saw how people could create positive cells, and I saw how people could create failure. <laughs> and I never thought that technique would, would, was there, but it was. Sometimes people find ways not to do things. And at the end, at the start, I introduced myself and said, OK, you've seen the TV commercial mayhem. I'm real. I'm in the room, and you're going to have to deal with me eventually. And all these are noble ideas, but how do you implement them? And then the, the shocking dis uh, discussion was, well, we have re a reliable grid. Oops. <laughs> uh, January 4th is going to start for us. And they were shocked, absolutely shocked, that all these things were going out in Lansing. So once again, the airport's very concerned. The HVAC went. Their, their nav aids, which are how they navigate when you try to get the plane down, they're kind of critical to you working, the same. So having said all that, the FAA and the airport are very concerned about these things. And so is the state center, and so is everything else. I'm not throwing any uh, money on the bus, but I did recommend to NYSEC, look at the Facebook posts. I don't make this stuff up. You can tell me if this is true or not, OK? And read what people are saying, simple as that. With the naming of the plaques, OK? We're working on that. One of the things I reached out to Jody Nake and also working with Pat Terrell is that you see these signs that say World Championship Baseball Teams. We would like to do one for Cal Dink and put it in that same area. Uh, maybe on a different color, maybe gold background. Uh, and perhaps, I talked to Jody yesterday, if you want to work 
with her on this, and then we'll turn it over to the wizards at the highway department, and they'll, 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 they'll do that creating what they do. Another, another thing, thank you. We'll, 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 we'll go from there. <laughs> and at the end of the day, rather than spend $1,000 for a billboard for a month, you get something that's a little more permanent. So anytime you want to do for Mr. Wheeler, We'll get together and talk. Do you want a resolution for the town board, is what you said? Well, what I want is some creativity on what you want done down there and where you want to put it. We have, we have to get together, Pat and I, and figure that out. Um, there's a lot more on here, but for the sake of sanity, we'll stop <laughs> tonight. As far as we got a lot more to talk about, we got the, we got the lead thing to talk about, and then we have to go into executive session for a few hours. So, we just have to segue into, into the lead situation. Um, so, having to deal with that, I enjoy the fact of enthusiasm. I appreciate the fact that you're being proactive. But, 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 um, and I have no problem making a motion to allocate money for this. Let's say five thousand dollars for the sampling. Please, though, let's talk with the board first. We need a copy of the letter you sent to the DEC. You, we, I got the response. I didn't see that letter. Okay. And if you did, I apologize. I didn't see it. If you didn't, please do it. We need it for a public record. That's all. Yeah. I'm not, it's not, not to throw stones at anybody. I enjoy your enthusiasm. I, I, I also want to find out what's there. Okay. I, I totally agree with you. Okay. Yeah. So I'm on board with that. But also, we also asked our attorney to talk to the environmental attorney to give some guidance as far as what we can and cannot do because we have to protect the whole town. <coughs> and do it in a proper way. I'm all for that, but I just want to know if maybe a guy can give us some, some guidance well, as far as what to do. And like I said, I have no problem with allocating 5,000 for the sampling and everything. I got, I got no problem with that. I just want to make sure that we aren't the first house, okay? Um, well, the first question was DEC permitting, and there might be an exemption for sampling, but it depends on when and et cetera. But it sounds like that or it was crossed. Yes. Um, that was, that was the whole point Second, I was asking, what was the permitting process? Right. Well, there is a permitting process, but it depends on how much soil you're moving and the purpose of the, of mm -hmm. the sampling and to what extent you're in the actual benthic areas of the water. Yeah. Um, the, the second point that was brought to me at my attention is that if you're going to be doing sampling and you want them to have any sort of, for lack of a better term, scientific validity, um, you might be well advised to have an environmental engineer or somebody else that does sampling protocols, knows where to test, et cetera, et cetera. Third thing was, um, if you don't find something, what does that mean? And if you do find something, what does that mean? And the overall question really was, what's the point of the sampling? Um, that was the question that, that he asked, and I was like, well, I don't know. I think it's too try to determine the extent to which there's a lead problem, at which point he said, it's a public record. The EPA has already made a public record and declared that there is an existing lead problem. What are you trying to say beyond that? And I what are they going to do about it? Well, well, the first answer is, we know there's a lead problem somewhere. We don't know if there's a lead problem in the swimming hole above the, the yeah. walls that people are using regularly. We don't know if there's or a down by the lake. down by the lake that people are uh, is there a public health issue that we need to alert the public and say, you really shouldn't be here? Just like well, the city did at Ithaca Falls. His concern was if you do find lead, how do you know it's from the gun club? I didn't say it was from the gun club. Yeah. I'm just saying, that, that was his concern. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, the juxtaposition, the timing suggests that there's a connection? Um, you know, what, what is the, because there's lead in all the water mm -hmm. from, from the gasoline, all the years of gasoline, you're going to find lead. I mean, that was his take. I, I don't really know. His concern was, you know, trying to figure out exactly what the source of it, given that there was a solution mine and blacksmith shops and a whole bunch of other industry in that area. What are you really looking for? Um, I, I said, I, I think that's more or less a policy decision for the board. I don't know that I know the answer to that. I think that I think the guidelines is that we're not doing any deep sampling. So it's just surface would be recent deposition, um, ethically just to rule out, you know, that there, I don't believe that there's lead in those areas that we are testing down by the lake. I don't believe we'll find any lead. 
Why should we spend the money? Because there's a lot of passion that's been going into conversation, and I believe in data, and I think allocating $5,000 to, to rule out any health effects for our citizens is good money spent. And we can't, like you say, if it's the if wherever we find it, we can't say it got there because of X, Y, Z. It just gives us data and an understanding. I'm not even sure we're going to have measurable lead blood level. I would like there not to be any measurable lead. So, um, but I do have experience doing soil sampling. I did a master's in soil sampling and testing for stuff. So. I'm, I'm relaying advice, yeah. not personal advice. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm just explaining that I prefer to have data. And I think, yes, we have to serve the whole town, but in public areas where the whole town visits and the children visit, if there is lead in the soil and Lovelville Falls, there should be a sign. That is our duty to put a sign there, you know, for families. Um, certainly, as part of the samples that would be tested, there will be control samples away from the testing areas, you know, so you have some, some understanding of balance, what you're comparing to. But yes, once we get it, there, you're absolutely right, the question is, what does it mean? I think just doing the testing and finding that there is no measurable toxicity in areas where the public frequents would do a lot to ease some of the angst and fears in this town. So you have a bunch of that's been to give samples. Hmm? Um, there also, is there someone, um, like you did with our environmental attorney, is there someone who can professionally do samples, an outside person also? also. That would be Not in every place of it. Right. Uh, and if we need to allocate more than 5,000 for that random sampling. I mean, you have some, I think, that were in the 100 spots already. If the rest of them can be done by, and I'm not saying an expert that you're not, I'm simply saying right, from, right. From, no, from, I, from someone outside of the board, whatever, sure. to do those samples Doing also. some duplicate sampling, that makes sense. And then go from there. You know, if you have somebody that can do that, or maybe a pulse specialist or something that can do that, um, that we can move forward and uh, take the samples and see what the analysis is. Yeah, he also mentioned baseline testing, ambient testing. So, you know, and he also mentioned needing to get permission from underlying landowners, but that already came up, so yep. it wasn't repeating. Bridges already crossed. Yeah. So we have someone, uh, so I guess, I guess we're gonna work with our environmental attorney and see, okay, what are the, what, what people do these things. Uh, that's something you can reach out to them and see. <laughs> yeah, we've, the, the town itself has, has used environmental engineers in the past. Um, geologic comes to mind. Okay. I don't, I don't know if this is what they do, but they're the ones who help us with the highway part. Um, Sometimes if they're not, they may know somebody who is. No. But I can ask Paul for recommendations, certainly. Are we okay with that? They would also be allocating $5,000 to this, yeah, this lead research project. Do we need to make a motion to move it? Uh, yes. I'll move it. I'll make a motion to move it. Okay, and you can second it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought we were. Uh, no, we actually discussed it. Yeah, they yeah. discussed it. Yeah. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't actually, I mean, we had the, the, the concept when we first started this. We Someone talked about asked, our Ed, do you want to say, yes, I told him, I don't mind testing any of the source samples. But now this is where you go to implement. Okay, okay so up to $5,000 budget for this, and it's been uh, motion by Joe, second by Andra. Um, well, could I just have a little more clarification on what the 5,000 is for? Are you allocating 5,000 for two soil testing? Um, it, uh, to pay for the lab to test about 125 samples from 125 samples from the outflow area of Santa Creek. We, got, um, we do have permission to take some small ones, a few in the stream bank edge. Um, we 
also the dry allocate, soil. allocate that for soil sample taking. Well, and we're going to take these samples also. Would that would that five thousand also or whatever some go in and take the samples too? No. Is there someone that actually does that, or who would, would, would go out and take the samples? I, okay. I. Okay. Andrew and I were going to okay. work on it together. Why don't you form on the lead abatement or the lead or the soil sampling? Mm -hmm. group. I mean, if if we end up having measurable levels anywhere, yeah. we will yeah. want yeah. to bring in outside uh, an additional outside testing. Or okay. duplicate verification. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Well, that's what I would do. I mean, yeah. if your samples show there's a problem, then bring then in the engineer to start yeah. analyzing where you should be testing and how you should be testing. Based on for the, for the, then that's for a different the, allocation. Yep. Okay. But I think okay. we're all in agreement that the first phase is, you know, if we can. And trowel and sterile sample bags. That's right. Yeah, probably. I, I, yeah, I did talk to the lab about their protocol, exactly the size, particle size, uh, exactly how to do the testing. Well, and to Guy's point, if you do find something, is it from, from the bills that were down there or from... Well, well that's why we're not digging deep. Yeah. And I think the DC's point was they didn't want any samples yeah, 12 inches was dug similar. deeper than 12 inches. And I'm, you know, we're really thinking in the, you know, four to six inch range. And you're not going to use a lead shovel to do these things? No. <laughs> so do we have enough information for So this, this is what I have written down. To allocate 5,000 to pay for the lab to test about 125 samples from outflow area of Salmon Creek and stream. And also in, including um, the base of Lovellville Falls and just above the Great Falls. Not, uh, and actually we need some control samples north. Okay, yeah. the Apple Falls, and then what did you say? And then, uh, say, 10 control samples upstream above Lebeville, above the bridge. So, so I'd recommend up to $5,000. Yeah, I was going to take controls. But I, it, I think it'll be close to four, just from the, it's about $30 a sample. Now we'll have a first discussion. Yeah, samples. Yeah. Oh, well, Katrina, when are we going to do a few of the uh, pilot uh, by the time? Yeah, I did say that. Sample some of the dredge. Yeah. Oh, okay. So don't use it all, right? This week. Does that need to be in here too? Yeah. Did you going to do that too? I think so. Even though that may not be the main form of the It's part of the. I'm going to go more than four inches deep in that one. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I have Joe making the motion. And a second in it. I'm just going to read this one more time so we're all clear about what you're agreeing or not agreeing to. I'll pay 5000 to pay for a lab to test about 125 samples from outflow area of Salmon Creek, stream, bank edge, including base of Lovelville Falls, tank control samples, up, and tank control samples upstream, and part of the dredging pile. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So, Ed, for your clarification, I sent you my email to DEC again. What you might be confused at is there's no previous email, it's all phone conversation before. Okay. So, did you, did you just send it to me now? Yes. Okay. So, before that, it was all phone conversation? Yes. Okay. Did you just tell me who, who you know? Teresa. I talked to Teresa. All right, anything else to do before we move into the second session? Okay, once, going twice. So, um, I know we'll be going to the second session. So, Ian is moving it? Yeah. Yes. To discuss um, specific issues with specific uh, personnel. And well, actually, yes. there, there's, there's a couple of things. Um, if this one is easier, it would be also to uh, the proposed acquisition sale lease of real property would probably be my impact. Okay. You have to state all the reasons you're going to the next session. I stated mine, so I'm going to you state yours. She did. Thank you. Okay. To talk about specific conversations okay. with specific personnel. And Michael, I want you to stay. Now this also, okay? Okay, specific personnel.
personnel and yours was the sale of the or acquisition of land. Yeah. 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 Can I ask just one question? Sure. Well, we're right kind of right yeah. right now. Can we do any samples? What? Can we let's we, we, we need to sample? Am I going to do it? Yeah. That's what we agreed to. Andrew was helping. Do you think that is advisable? Yes. She has the background to do it. But you're also on the town board. Do you think somebody else can do it instead? I think you're asking for trouble, but that's only my opinion. Okay. I've been staying neutral on this, so. So let's move into the next session. Okay, so Andrew made the motion. Nobody seconded the motion yes. for the two different reasons that were mentioned. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.